You nervous? Your hands sweating? All right, let me close up on my my tablet because I can't I can't see nothing like on my own. Oh, we is live. Hold on. <laughs> And then just the only thing I ask y'all is to cut down your volume because it'll it'll have feedback. So like mute your volume if you're when you're watching the um thing, the live from your phone or from another device, just cut the volume like all the way down. The way you can just only Oh, I thought you were talking about us. Like oh, the no, actual no. volume. Okay. Yeah. Can't see nothing like on my own. All right. I mean, I want to see the comments. Right. Can I get on the live and see the comments? Yeah, you got to, yeah. All right, I'm here, I'm here. All right, y'all ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, Wilbur, I see you, boo. I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, that's my best friend. That's my guy best friend. <laughs> okay. It said Wilbur Carter is watching with you. I see you. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm trying to turn this down, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. I'll wait. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. Sorry for the lateness. We're going to put it on strawberry shortcake here. <laughs> <laughs> She will be <laughs> strawberry shortcake. <laughs> strawberry shortcake, looking looking like strawberry shortcake. All right, so <laughs> hi everyone. This is I've Noticed Podcast episode uh, number seven, five and seven of oh, episode number seven. Um, we have two special guests here, but before we introduce them, or I allow them to introduce themselves, um, make sure you go like all the business pages, the Ashes Jimmy Tummy catering page on facebook you can go to the <laughs> you can go to the website uh and order sauces from there i'll also be uploading like additional things as well um go to the ashley's yummy to me youtube page so if you don't catch this video live that is where the videos will be uploaded so it's it's uploaded like the whole episode that's always the very first episode that's uploaded and then i break them down into the questions so tonight if we have time we're gonna do five questions um so they'll be broken up so if you you know you got add you know and then also you can go listen to it like on uh amazon pandora itunes so if you're working out are you at work you're doing a little office job and you you not can't really visually watch it, then you can also just listen to it um, audio wise. Why you ain't tell me that so I can follow it on iTunes and all that stuff on Spotify? <sighs> well, I, you know. Know. I mean, I'm still working on stuff, you know. But also follow me on Instagram, uh, Ashley <laughs> Monique eight four three. I will eventually do an I've noticed podcast uh, Instagram page as well. Uh, what else? What else? So I, I think that's about it. So the Ashley Jimmy Tummy Catering Facebook, Ashley Jimmy Tummy um website, Ashley Jimmy Tummy YouTube to, in order to watch these videos, replay them. Um, but you can also still watch them on the Facebook um if you want to like look at the comments as well. And uh go like the I've noticed Facebook page, um, like that. That's where I also post the videos as well. And so um so we're gonna let our special guests introduce themselves first and where you can follow them at. And then we'll let uh, the girls who you already know um, introduce themselves and where you can follow them at. Um, who would like to go first? Ladies first, ladies first. I'm just gonna say that because you are such a gentleman. <laughs> Hi, you guys. Yeah, okay. I'm right. Esther. Yeah. Um, I don't know who knows me out here, but I'm super new. Um, I am originally <clears throat> from, I have lived in, Mary County before, so that's probably why I see my face. My face is so familiar. Um, you could definitely follow my regular page, as Esther Schuler. I have a very new fitness journey page. You can join. I have my very new business, SV Fitness Journey. You can join that page as well. It's on Instagram, SV underscore 20. And I also have a personal Instagram page, which is lady underscore E. Please go follow all pages. And if you have any weight loss, needs holla at me i lost over 100 pounds within a year or two so let me know that's amazing thank you that's dope thank you daniel what's going on y'all i my name is daniel knight 
Uh, y'all, some of y'all probably know me as Rhythm. It's my artist name. Um, I'm a little bit of a singer. Um, but a little bit, <laughs> little bit, <laughs> little bit. You little could, bit. you could sing. Oh, man. <laughs> I need to hear you. He's a yeah. too. You can go. Who says that? Who said that? Why? What, what I'm did you say? <laughs> You can I tell am not a celebrity. I'm not TikTok famous. But no, I wouldn't. Follower. Eleven. Now. You so I wouldn't. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on TikTok. I was gonna say my TikTok and my Instagram have the same handle as I underscore am underscore rhythm. You spell rhythm R H Y T H Y M, and you can follow me on there. Um, yeah. Okay, let's give him a here. round of applause. He's from Marion County, this small town. He got 10,000 TikTok, like, listen, goals. Oh, you gotta shout me out. You gotta shout me out. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I got you. I'll be editing your TikTok tonight. Thank you. Oh, my Lord. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Okay. Um, thank this, y'all for uh, having me, too, Ashley. Oh, yeah, no thank problem. You. No problem. Kiki or Courtney? Oh, I, I'm Courtney. <laughs> I'm not TikTok famous or anything, um, but I do have an IG. Uh, it's called F-U-L-L-C-O-R-T. You can follow me on that. I'm going to start getting active on that real soon. Uh, I don't have nothing going on, but just watching. <laughs> we still going to follow you. <laughs> oh, y'all ready for me? Oh, okay. So I'm Kiki, of course. Kista, no Instagram. Uh, Snapchat, maybe. I forget. Times. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no TikTok stuff. My my children do that on my tablet, and um, <laughs> uh, I guess I sing a little bit at church and stuff, but I don't have no ten thousand followers or nothing like that. But um. <laughs> You'll no. get there one day. One day, one day, yeah, one day. All right, so let's yeah. let's go into this because we're behind schedule and I don't want to keep people <clears throat> up. I got a busy day tomorrow. Hi, Brittany. That's my cousin, y'all. All right, so let's go with the first topic. The first topic is <laughs> females that are pregnant with one guy's child be it their boyfriend their ex-boyfriend or whomever their sneaky link or whatever you know friends with benefits whatever but she's pregnant with one guy's child but she's still sexually active and dating a whole nother person my god <laughs> my lord Wait, ooh. how do y'all feel about that like is it is she free to well, it's her body. She does whatever she wants to do. Are we doing that feminist? Are we going the feminist route? Or are we like using some, I don't want to say common sense route, but moral and integrity? Like how, how are we going about this? You know, I can, I can agree, go, disagree? I, for me, I just think it's more of a respect. It's definitely her body. She can Correct. do whatever she wants with her body. But I just think it's more of a woman as a respect thing. Like, okay, come on. I'm carrying this man baby for nine months. Maybe I can date this guy. You can date, but as far as sleeping with, hold off. You still have somebody baby inside you. That's kind of like disrespectful a little bit. So I just think like you just need to hold up. You can wait nine months. It, and then it didn't even work with your baby daddy. So why are you like, take some time for yourself, baby girl. But my opinion. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. If I may, I think for... <sighs> I and think this, is why you, this is where you come in, Daniel, because we need guys for these men yeah. for these topics. This is where you really yeah. come in. Um, I think it depend. It also depends on the situation and what okay. for me. And I'm saying if we were talking or we were together already and then you had a baby on me, then that's an issue. You know what I'm saying? You obviously committed infidelity as to where we're going to go our separate ways. But if if she just say she just found out she was pregnant and it was a one night stand or you know it wasn't a relationship which maybe she's just trying to get out there's been a couple months you know what i'm saying i can't necessarily I, I don't think that i would not talk to her 
because yeah. <clears throat> this is the reason why. The reason why is because <laughs> now, the sexual active thing, I, I agree with Esther. I agree with Esther in the sense, I'm not going to touch you in that manner. Until, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm but, just not. I'm so just you're going to wait nine. Okay. Well, now, if you say you're not going to have sex with her, now, that's, now that goes deep. So you said she just she found out. So let's let's say she she um she three months in, right? So you're mm-hmm. telling me you're not gonna touch her for six months. You're not gonna be sexually no. active with her for six months. No. Well, really, really longer than that. What is six? Let's say eight months. It's like six to eight, because like six to eight mm-hmm. weeks after you had the baby, right? Yeah. My see, I'm I'm really different. And one thing that's not is not a necessity per se although it is very important in a relationship sex. is sex right. so for me you know i can still even use that as an excuse as to let's really get to know each other i might not like you after this nine months you feel me like this might show me that oh this this is what you turn into when you get pregnant i'm not giving you no kids you know it, it could be either either or I, that's that's not necessarily a necessity for me you gonna wait that you know long what I'm saying? To figure out you like her or not though no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm using that as an excuse. You know what I'm saying? Like as an example, but as far as be getting physical, being physical, that's not something that is a necessity for me. Or like even right off the bat like that. You know what I'm saying? I totally get that because you do want to get to know a person. Like, yeah. And we, we've had a topic, we discussed that maybe about two weeks ago about, um, which which the question was about, are you waiting for the 90 days or are you like, fuck it? And so we all kind of agreed, and I think it was like five of us up here at the time, we all agreed that we're not going to wait, we're not going to put a time stamp on it, it's just the vibes and the energy. So yeah. let's say you are getting to know her and you like her, so how about this, I'm going to go deep. Would you do oral? You may not enter would you do oral oral pleasure on her because now you like her you see she's struggling her back hurt her titties swole you know <laughs> her ankle swole you just want you start you start massaging her and you just be like damn she you know <laughs> would you orally please her with another man's baby in her that's oh. kind of hard that's 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 hard to wrap my head around <laughs> Yes, I'm doing. I mean, just be honest. I don't. You I don't think. I don't think that I could. Honestly, <laughs> like I, I don't think that it. I could. Only, <laughs> yeah, bro. Like I just, you know, say I just that would be in the back of my head for some strange reason. Like it is a whole human being right there. But, but that's but the, I'm not, I, the reason why I went that deep, Daniel, is because if you're if you're saying because now you've gotten to know her, now you you like her, and right. you see she is struggling with the pregnancy, normal struggle, not like extra struggle, just normal right. struggle pregnancy. Mm-hmm. And then you that's your girl now. You like her, so you do want to massage her like her feet because her feet are swollen. So. But that's now intimacy, though. That's, that, that's not always sexual. I understand <laughs> it, but now there's okay. feelings there. You like her. You want to please her. You want to satisfy her. So you know you're not going to disrespect, you know, another man's child by entering in her sexually. But would you orally please her? I just, I don't, I think it would just be the whole thing would be we're, we're going to wait. You know what I'm saying? And if I, I like her. Case, just wait, period. Until after she has that's what that's my point. That's what I I'm mean, saying. like relationship wise, <laughs> period. Don't even don't get in a relationship but, with her. But don't it for me, it takes time. Okay. For me, it takes time to be sexually active with somebody anyway without okay. really getting to know them. You get what I'm saying? Like for me. So like I just can't just be out here. I just don't be out here hopping in the sack with just, you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So like for me, it, it's all up here anyway. I got to see what's up here. Rather than what's up, Whitney? Um, I got to see what's up here before I even get aroused. You get what I'm saying? So I need that time anyway, whether she's pregnant or not. I still oh, need that time. <laughs> you said what? You are a reverie. I know, right? That's what I'm like. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm poking it. I'm like, so, so how about this? Quiet with a camera, but he sound good. <laughs> So I mean, I'm, no, we've, I'm had, we've had a couple, a couple guys that's that's been up here. They've been different. Like even Wes was different. Wes was he was different in his own way. Um, Sean Swamp he was different in his own way. Like that's why I'm happy that um bringing guys up here because we 
low key we stereotype y'all. Yes, but then when y'all low key, when, when, you get low okay, key. okay, yeah. high key, high key, we stereotype y'all. High key, high key. <laughs> That's why I was like, hold on, you are a rare breed, but you do. I, I have met a lot of men that says it takes a while for them to sleep with a woman. It is, and honestly, uh-huh. oh no, no, I was, I was telling somebody, thank you. Oh no, no, I, I have met some men that said it takes a while, and I'm like, really. Again, it, it just I just don't want to stick my thing in everything. And I'm just like, oh, really? But it's not, it's not, I don't run across a lot because it seems like the ones I run into always want to stick their thing like the day one. So I'm just like, but my homeboys, they say, well, they don't have to. Or I meet some men, they're like, they don't have to. They're waiting. Oh, it's been months since I've done it. And it makes me feel bad. Like, dang, really? Yeah. I, I, listen, I'm in my dating phase right, right now. And I don't be believing these guys. I mean, Okay, let's say this right here. Guys that used to say they're waiting and guys that are watching right now, you can you can put drop a crown if it's true, or you can do an X if you if it ain't true or whatever. You choose what you want. But guys that used to say that they are waiting, they're usually getting sexually satisfied from, from somebody else. So that was I was gonna ask you about that. Oh, but because of your response, I'm not even gonna ask you that because I get the feeling that if you were um in the process of getting to know her while she's pregnant with someone else's child, I don't feel like you don't give me the vibes or the energy that you will be entertaining another woman for sexual purposes. You don't give me that vibe or that energy. Nah. So I wouldn't even ask you that question. But I'm just. I mean, but don't say- don't get me wrong. I mean, I. It's not that. That's not been me all my life. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, okay, people say change. it all. Time. I I ain't okay, been saying change. it all my life. That's just where. That's just where it's been as I'm getting older, you know what I'm saying? Like you have your fun, you do what you want to do. There's been some times where I've had, you know, a, a quick physical relationship, but I've learned from that and to learn that it's only going to become a physical relationship. I can't even ask you how your day is because you come to my house and you are already naked. Like, can we talk? Can we, can we actually do something? Can we actually go get something to eat? I'm hungry. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that changed me over time to where like I, I don't even I can't even get aroused. Bro. Whitney, I didn't even see that. You know what? Yeah. Like, Whitney just said he's definitely different yeah. to your yeah. shirt. I didn't even see that. Hey, right here. This is just one of my favorite hoodies. Just so like, oh, I did not wear this for this podcast. But no, I'm just I'm just saying like, that's, hey. you know, it ain't always been like that, but you know, that's just where I'm at now mentally. I, right. I need to be able to talk to you. All right, so Kiki, um, what's your thoughts on the topic? Um, how do you feel about women that are pregnant with somebody else's child, but dating and sexually active with somebody else? Yay, nay. I say nay. Why? Uh, it's, 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 it's a numerous of reasons why I say nay. Um, as far as I'm not saying that she can't do what she want to do, mm-hmm. but especially depending on what stage of pregnancy she in, uh, well, it don't even matter what stage of pregnancy she's in, uh, her being pregnant and her being the receiver of things, y- y'all know where I'm going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Whitney do too. <laughs> I know, I oh, just she, saw what Whitney said. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, she coming, she here. But um, like spirits are real. We talked about that generational right, stuff. Right. And I was mm, like, that stuff yes. is real. Yes. So her receiving already from the the sperm donor, because obviously that's what they are. She's with somebody else, and then receiving from somebody else. It's not just her receiving now. The baby is now receiving. Mm. So you are now trying to put in this different stuff from other places into not just you but your child now. So I, you, ma'am. I say I say that's why the main reason why I say nay. Now I mean she gonna do what she wanna do, then that that's her. Tell Carol leave me alone. If that's what if that's <laughs> what she going in. <laughs> Talk about teach us, missionary, teach yes, us. Sir. It's so, You're preaching, it's, man. I mean, you know, if that's what they're going to do, that's what they're going to do because, you know, everybody have their own mind. Everybody have their own thing. Right, but me right. personally, not just that, I still say have respect for your child 
to refrain from someone that's not the father. It's no longer about just you now. It's now about the child. Mm -hmm. Miss Courtney? Um, (laughs) So, here's my thing. I just, if a woman decided to do that, you know, to date and sleep with another man while she was pregnant, regardless of how far along she was, I don't think I would judge it. But we know how I am. I I, I wouldn't judge it. However, I think it's very weird. <laughs> I, I see think, how you can feel comfortable doing it. Exactly. I think it's weird. Like one, like I don't even see how you would navigate dating someone completely different while you're still pregnant. Like how do you, I, to me, it's weird to even put yourself in a position to even start the conversation of trying to invite someone else in your life while you got something, you know, something going on. That's just weird to me not saying that I would judge anybody for it but it's just it's weird and I don't see how I mean granted I think I've heard I've I've never had kids y'all know how I feel about that (laughs) but I've heard like while you're pregnant like you get horny a lot you know like it's it's the situation down there or whatever but even then I don't see how you could do that with it's just weird it's just weird that's just to sum it all up to me it's just weird but I mean if you you know whoever's doing that I wouldn't look at him like girl like I wouldn't do all that but it's weird <laughs> okay so these are my thoughts on it um first off if she, if, okay. if, a, if a female is dating per se clearly her and her her baby dad are as Keisha say the sperm donor he, they're no longer together my thing is now you're a parent so if anything i feel like you should be not traumatized but you should be like oh shit this ain't like this ain't what i anticipated i was supposed to be in a relationship this supposed to be a love child you know now you're single i don't think you should be out here looking for dick like i think you should be out here making sure that you are financially stable like talk to the uh the the sperm donor like are we gonna co-parent or are we just on a break right now you know um i just feel like there's way more important things that you should be focused on ver- versus like trying to be in a relationship. And as Courtney say, like, it is how do you even have, how do you even feel sexy or attractive or like, you know, feel comfortable even talking to a guy? And like, I see it so much, you know, I'd be like, how in the, why is he, oh my God. But then again, in my head, and he, I know guys probably gonna be like, what the hell? I just think like guys just be wanting to have sex. So they just be like, because I've seen the thing where they say, oh, pregnant pussy is the best pussy. Yeah. You know, it's wetter. You know. Yeah. I've, um, heard that. I've so literally just, had somebody tell me that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm just like, and I guess it goes with what you said, Courtney, about them being more horny and stuff, you know. But um, I I don't agree with it. Um, and I don't have children. I haven't been pregnant, you know. But uh, I know when the time do happen, I'm not doing that. If me and the uh, child's father does not work out, I'm not doing it. If anything, I'm probably going to be in therapy because uh, I'm going to be like, I did not anticipate this. You know, I'm not going to be out here on some dating site looking to hook up with a guy, you know. Right. Maybe. Get off of Tinder. Yeah. Get... Put? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, of course, it disappeared. Whitney said, yeah, because how you have a whole baby in your stomach from one guy and one another one pleasing you in that way. LOL. I know it happens, though. It happens a lot. I, I, this I, is, I hate to say people. it, but I've literally, I've literally had, and this is, I'm telling my business, I've literally had, she was a really good friend of mine. She got pregnant, and we had this conversation, and she was trying, and I was like, oh, what, trying no. to get with you? She was trying to hunt me. She wasn't even trying to get with me. And it was, she said, you know, that she said exactly what uh what Courtney said was um, you know, pregnant women, we just have urges, we have more urges. And she was just kept saying that. And I'm like, what are you getting at? Like, what just just what are you saying? And she was like, I I need some help. And I was like, How far along was she? <laughs> um I need some help. Five. It was like five. Five months. Five months. She said, yeah. I need some help. Like, like I she asked in the bar $20 story. for gas to go to work. True story. True story. Like, true, story. Moment, true story. True story. In the moment, did you feel uncomfortable initially or were you just like, like, what was your initial feeling when you realized what she was asking you? What the hell? 
Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's back that track. Was Were you sexually attracted to her prior to pregnancy, or even during pregnancy? She was my friend. Like oh, so, so there was no friend. sexual. So yeah, it wasn't nothing. You it wasn't. Still find them attractive. So you she can. was beautiful. She was beautiful. It wasn't. I'm just saying there wasn't nothing between us. I found yes. To answer your question, I found her attractive, but it wasn't okay. me acting on that. I get what you're saying now. Now pause. Let, let me ask you this: If she wasn't pregnant and she said, "I'm just having these urges. I just need you help me out. Let's do something." Would <laughs> you have? Because you do find her attractive. When she asked me this, this was some years ago, probably. Probably because so, they're, they're so you got where, standards, it's the baby that's in them, yeah. And I told her that I said, No, <laughs> no, you're like, I'm sorry, I can, you know, what I'm saying I'll, I'll cash out you some money for a toy, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not like, No, no. And I told her that it's not that deep, that. like, right. I'm saying here that there's plenty of other ways to, to, to you know. <laughs> Our friendship as well because after it's over y'all would have been laying there like so so you want some juice <laughs> same time tomorrow <laughs> same time next you know, week after break, you know after you get the big old you have that moment of clarity right right <laughs> like, like what did i just do that's why <laughs> i don't that's why i don't i don't i don't do stuff like that like i when it those urges i just you become a dj <laughs> you know okay, <laughs> Not a toy. Karen Smith said, "Not I a can't toy. with you. Yes, a toy. A, a toy. toy. She should want a toy is hell. The soul ties in her. She should be good at this moment. Right. Wait your nine months. Get to know yourself. You messed up with your baby daddy. Get to know yourself. Like yes. she said, get some therapy if need be. But you really need to be alone. Please yourself. Yep. And then get it going. And to, like after nine months, then do that. Do that. I'm but you wait." I'm an advocate for pleasing yourself because that is the safest sex. Yeah, it's the you ain't got to worry sex. about nobody calling you. So you ain't got to worry about crazy. nobody harassing you. You ain't got to worry about no STD. Only maybe you might snag a nail or something, you know. Yeah, so but you ain't got to worry about it's over now. Also, you know yourself, so you, and you, you know, know yourself. To worry about it ain't gonna take that long. Get to that point, bring brought back down because somebody done moved to the left. You know, it's. Right, and, don't, too good. And, and don't let it it might be whack too so oh. ain't oh it so God. now you got to deal with the fact <laughs> of now your your friendship possibly is ruined you know uh-huh. and traumatize your baby yeah like yeah ugh. i just mm-mm. all right so that was great so let's go to the second topic um so basically to wrap up the first topic the question was uh if a woman is pregnant with a child how do you feel about it we all agreed that no that's weird focus on yourself you a single parent. You damn near a single parent. Now, don't be worried about no penis. Be worried about diapers and and wipes and shit. You know. But anyway, um. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, <laughs> she both. Do you said is that why y'all nails be broke? <laughs> no. Who said that? Who no. Said that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Who said is that why y'all nails be broke? Like y'all have nine good that. nails and one. Are you trying to be pretty? It'll be two. Be- honestly, honestly, the reason why the nails be broken stuff is because we be we are multitasking, we be washing dishes, yes. we, be, we taking children to school, we uh opening car doors, we open no, sometimes the they nail, all that nail be little bit. Beating on us, man. Don't forget that. <laughs> I don't have beat on us. That's why that's why the nails be broke all the time because we, we always do beat on us. No, I beat on no man. No, I beat on no man. All right. So the question, the the uh, second question, a topic. Okay, maintaining friendships with your recent ex boyfriend or ex girlfriend. Do y'all believe that? Like, do you you meet somebody? She's not pregnant, or he's not got nobody pregnant. And but the, in the course of y'all getting to know each other, there's like the phone ring or somebody pop up and like, oh, that's just my ex. We're just really good friends. The fuck? How do y'all feel about that? Are y'all comfortable with? dating someone y'all done passed the uh get to know each other phase now y'all are actually in a relationship monogamy or monogamous or whatever it's called monopoly or whatever uh but they are wow. friends with their ex how do y'all feel about that and how and how do you feel about it and have you had a situation like that anybody can go I mean, up until recently, I would have been a real big advocate on you could be friends with your ex, but there's limitations to it. But I mean, recently I've been proven wrong that that's not true. But um, 
uh, what's it called? I think it, there's boundaries to it. Like you could still be on good terms with your ex, but are they calling you, you know, every day? Are they calling you every other day? What are y'all talking about? How long are your conversations? Like, you know, is when something's wrong, is that the person you call? Like there's limitations to it. But if y'all, you know, y'all see each other in the store and y'all like, yo, what's up? You know, that's, that's not a big deal to me, but it's just a matter of how often are y'all conversing, you know, with the friendship because at the end of the day y'all were together so there's you know there's always going to be like some type of strand string however you want to call it there but I mean for me it wouldn't be a big deal if someone's like I'm cool with my ex or you know and then yeah I would I, that wouldn't be a problem it's just a matter of how often are y'all talking and like is that someone that's still so important in your life where something goes wrong that's the person you call you know something happens is that the person you call it's just a matter of that so would would you so with your example or your answer, you see that there it is a friendship. Would you then become friends, try to become friends with the ex as well? So y'all can just be why would I try to become friends with them? Because I mean clearly the she's only way I would try to become friends with the, my with my current partner's ex is if they had kids. Okay. That would be the only way actively try to become friends with them if they're friends like because i'm a big firm believer that i don't have to be friends with everyone that you're friends with absolutely mm -hmm. if if they're friends if they don't have no kids or nothing like that and they're cool i'm not gonna try to go out my way and try to be cool with her that's y'all friendship as long as y'all ain't crossing the lines and y'all ain't talking every day cool but the only way i would go out of my way and be like you know what let me try to be friends with her is if they if that person had kids because if i'm trying to be active in this person's life their kids are going to come into play at one point. My most important thing would be trying to make sure the mom is comfortable with me. Okay. Mm. Next person. Can I, I'm go. Mm -hmm. um, I am a firm believer. I am a true definition. I'm, I'm going to get very personal on this. Okay. You can be friends with your ex. And, and, and as much as I want to say you can, let me be, let me be honest. I am very much, I, I converse with a lot of my ex and it's not <laughs> it's not only on the honky donkey oh I'm doing fine it's on the type of how you doing baby let me do this let me do that I miss you or can we do this it's not it's not on a friendship level now if you can wow. maintain if you can maintain that the boundaries fine but you do have my exes can't so it's just <laughs> like Tell me about it. Talk about my it. Can't. So it's just like, it's, I'm my horn. I'm addicted. So I'm, I, I receive it and I'm still single. So I'm receiving it. But I'm just like, um, no, you, if, you, if your ex are, is in another relationship and, and, they, and they tell you they're contacting their ex, if I'm that ex, just please note, he's not being he's not being faithful he's talking disrespectful he's very disrespectful he wants more pictures because i'm not in town <laughs> i'm not in town so they want more pictures they want to get to know me a little they, they, they want to know what's up you know so i'm not that ex that they feel like but will i entertain it depends on the ex but i mean i'm gonna like, be honest with you so <laughs> They yeah. don't wear they're not, they're not, they, they want to get to know what, and this is the kid lost weight. They want to know a little more. So if your ex is contacting me, be aware. Okay. Now this don't wear from exes and friendships to a baked potato, a side dish. So are you it's saying- It's not even a side dish because you have to entertain it. But these exes will come at you crazy. They okay, will come so, at you crazy. So, okay, so now this is interesting because now this could be spinned off into another topic being that you and your partner y'all broke up your partner which is now your ex they are in another relationship however let's say you did a, a, a weight loss transformation or whatever and I, either they just miss you they just miss you they see you scrolled up they always oh, see you and then they hit you up and they may want to have some type of yeah you know for old time's sakes or whatever now you're currently technically you're single but he or she is in the relationship you will feel comfortable still dibbling and dabbling with the ex if you feel like it because you are single and you don't owe her no her him or her no loyalty or nothing like that you know i don't 
Can I be honest? Be honest. Be honest. I'm being very honest. I have entertained an okay. ex relationship. I have. Now, is and it because it, 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 it's not my burden? I just felt like I was entitled, to be honest. I was entitled. I was going to say that. I was, was going to say that. Some people, <laughs> like, some people, man or woman, they feel like, I don't care about you. I was there first. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, you, know, you, know what that hit me, you know what that hit me on? That hit me on with the top. That, remember we was talking about the tattoo topic and I was like, don't erase my name. That's kind of made me feel like when he said that, that's what made me feel like, well, technically, yeah, you know. But you know, but you, know you, grow, you grow and you know that's not right. You know that's not godly. You know that you in the future, you don't want nobody doing that to you. That's not okay. So... Yeah, you don't but do we're that. Still, no. We're still growing. We're still learning. We're still growing and we're still learning, but I still felt entitled and I still did. I, I'm beyond, I still did it. And Wait, so was it, your, do you have kids? Mm -mm. No? Okay, so I was going to say, because I have, I see a lot of that entitlement mentality with people who have kids from those people, like, especially like with the daddies and the oh babies. I just feel like the vibe. Oh I just the vibe when I have with my exes. Me and my exes, like, we're, we're cool. I'm not the type of feel like when we, when we, when we separate, it's not like I'm busting your windows or something like that. It's like we just we just didn't work out, you know. It just didn't happen. So it's like they want to get to know me. They, they I mean, I get to, they want to know how I'm doing. They know to know when they want to know how I'm progressing. And then the, the conversations will be will lure. They will go crazy. But it's just like, of course, I'm not going searching for it. They're coming to me. I'm going. I'm going to respond, you know. But my my all my situations, all my relationships, they haven't. They don't end ugly. They don't end ugly. They just they end very peaceful so I, I usually get those those phone calls too and it's usually always around the holidays it's always around the holidays when um, I get the phone calls the hey how are you just checking up on you seeing how you doing and most of the time mine isn't I don't break up <laughs> I don't break up what's the word it's not with eight I'm southern and I got my retainers in am amicable how do you pronounce it amicable bully oh, the a word <laughs> Like you're not, you don't break up like on good terms, amicable. I look, Whitney. I know you know the word. Right. I know you, I know like, you know how to say. It, but, it's like that. Like, okay, I can but, still. But that's the him. word. So when my when my exes reach out to me on that, hey, um, I just want to say happy Thanksgiving, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's. You know. I just want to see how you was doing. Mine is always like, get the fuck off my phone. Like, you know how I'm doing. You know how I was doing before I left you. Uh, before we broke up, I'm good. I was good then and I'm better now, you know? So mine ain't never no like, oh, I this, 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 you know, unless I'm just, you I'm know. I'm not that angry. I'm not that angry. I'm at peace. I'm, I'm not going to give you that. I'm going to let you know I'm good. I'm going to let you know. I'm, I'm going to ask you, are you okay? How are you? But I'm not, I'm not that angry because I didn't leave you in an angry place. Even if I left you in an angry place, that's your loss. You're back. And, and, and that's why I say what I be saying too, because I be like, you knew I would. Now, I don't say it like aggressively. I, I do it in that uh, nasty, nice type of way. I do it like, <laughs> you know, yeah, that. I'm like, you know, I'm good. I was good before you we split. You know, like, I'm good now. About to get my food truck, about to get it, you know, da, 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 you know, so. But, you say um, so. I have one egg. You hit me up now. Nah, he getting cussed the out don't do it don't hit me up <laughs> I don't it ain't think nice you. i won't be humble i won't be i won't be peaceful <laughs> he, he, what's your what's your own um, response like how do you feel about your your current boyfriend maintaining relationships with his uh ex well um really and by, and by the way you guys audience she actually does have a boyfriend. Awesome. <laughs> okay, ma'am, you better do it. Really, Ashley? You know, um, I, just don't, I just don't want all the Christian men, you know, trying to come at you. I just want them to know they know they place, you know. Not the, okay, not well, the Christians. thank you for looking out. Thank you for looking out. But, um, okay, so like a little bit of what everybody said, but there's something that... um. Whitney has said, um, she said, I've entertained it once and I hated that I did because I didn't even want uh, the guy anymore. I just wanted her to know I could have him if I wanted him. So oh! I him. <laughs> okay. So listen, 
All right. So about that, though, that brought back something. Some years ago, I, I, I did talk to a guy and things were not cool. Things were not working out. And matter of fact, it was good that it was actually separating. Like it was great. And I knew I couldn't be his friend or whatever the case may be. But the girl, I, I tried. I absolutely tried. But the girl that he's actually married to her now. and she My was, God. But um, she saw me one day and I was just like smiling. I was okay. She was like, oh, you look happy. And it's like, oh, so you think you took him from me or you, you think you, oh, okay, cool. So I didn't do anything with him, but I was like, I just want you to know the same way you got him is the same way you'll keep him. Mm-hmm. So I called just to say, hey, meet me. They met me, left her at the house, all the chilling. So, I mean, I could have been dirty about just it. Just taking L's. Oh, yeah, so man is just stupid. <laughs> Whitney said this, and now you're saying this. So, and Esther said it as well. So this is the thing. So women, do we do this? Like, do we do, we do that? I just want you to know that I could, I could if I wanted to. We're malicious. That, that part. Well, Man, I've heard that. I've heard that so many times. I usually don't if, do that. Everybody that's watching, women, if you've done that, drop a crown. If you've done that, like if you've like, I'm gonna be honest with you. Before I lost my ex, before I lost him, I was like, if you, if you, if you can get him, you can have him. Well, look, he be bad though. <laughs> Yeah, I think everybody. I think I think a lot of us like feel like that at times. Like where we be like, you know, it's the it's the entitlement. Like she said, I was here first. I had him first, and I honestly, he only gone because I let him go. Like that's literally how I did something wrong. Like he wouldn't be gone if I wouldn't have messed up. So girl, you know. I ain't, well, I ain't gonna say that because y'all would be ready to crucify me. But when I no, like, no, 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 just... no, 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 say what you need to say. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, I was just saying, you know, it's the it, it, men have the all. I always say men have the audacity, women have the entitlement. Ooh! Like in in everything, in everything, in everything, oh, and that's just that's just how I to keep feel. Peace in his household, you 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 go there. You he there. Yeah. You, know how to keep peace in you know, because audacity was my word for the week, man. The audacity. We do like that's yeah. just what it is, but y'all y'all not gonna front and say y'all don't have the entitlement. That I, is a gene <laughs> that is embedded not, in y'all DNA. <laughs> it's, it's not it's not that I did it as far as the entitlement entitlement or the fact that I was there. It was the point that she bragged in my face. But that's like, what makes y'all feel entitled, though. It's always something that no, comes I didn't that makes you. I just wanted her to know you have to be careful how you brag about stuff or what you're doing or what you did. That's a word. To you thinking that you took a guy <laughs> like hey, you, that's a word. you have to be you have to be careful about that because bragging could get you in some trouble like bragging can show you up to say oh you really think this and then and then that's it so yeah. at the time because i was upset i was mad and i was angry and hurt i was a little petty to try to show you know to show her that yeah keep bragging but i still was i didn't cross that line with him wasn't gonna cross that line with him i refused to cross that right. line Right. and everything like that but as far as like to answer the specific question um i I've, I've grown to be the person that i give you trust you get like point point one trust it's either you get the zero or it's either you could get to 100 it's up to you but you start with point one trust and if you break that because i do know for sure some relationships don't work sometimes there are relationships that they are better off best friends than they are being together. Mm. And they literally can be the best of friends, like Mm -hmm. nothing ever happened. And so, I mean, that is out there. I know a few that's like that and everything. Fortunately, me and my best friend, me and my exes don't have to be best friends. I'm fine. But that's just how I've grown to be, is I give you that point one trust. And it's either you add to that point one or you take away from that point one. Either way, that decision is going to be you. So that's kind of how how I. So it's like a fifty fifty for me. It all depends the situation. Okay. I was going to say, Daniel, what's your take on it? I feel, um, I just feel like it depends on 
a couple things. I feel like it depends on the person. It depends on their maturity. You know what I'm saying? From both parties. I feel like it's possible. I don't feel like it's possible for me per se, but I feel like it's possible. And it's the only, but it's, there's underlining reasons for that for me. My trust issues came from infidelity. You right. feel what I'm saying? My trust issues came from that's my cousin. That's my baby mama's best friend. That's my that's my best friend's sister, brother, like what, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like that it stems from that to where the lies is what kind of messed my trust issues up. So I don't care who you know. I, you got you're guilty until proven innocent. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but I feel like it's possible for somebody who has, like you said, some people just know that they're better off being best friends and they have no intention of taking that any further, even if they were, you know what I'm saying? Even if they were sexually active with each other. I, I believe it's possible. It just depends on the person. You know what I'm saying? It depends on their damage. It depends on how they broke up. You know, it just, right. there's a lot of factors that Every, play yeah, into everything it. plays a part in it. Yeah. But it, it, it just comes down to trust for me. I don't, you know what I'm saying? If you tell me, yeah, we're best friends, but we used to smash. We never was in a relationship, but we used to smash. I still don't want you dealing with him because that's something that you was in a physical relationship. I would respect you if I'm if I'm coming into this relationship and you know I have a best friend and she we were intimate and you say, "Bad, I'm not comfortable with that." All right, um, mm -hmm. I'm holler at you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it, so it just depends on somebody has said in here. It depends on the um the respect i think it was i think it was uh d moses it depends on the respect that that happens i, I like i said there's people that have done it it's just you know i, I you got to show me something because i might not say nothing right then and there but you best believe i'm watching i'm not going to make it difficult for us until i start seeing you on the phone with him at, at bad hours when you are you coming from or heading to his house when you leaving me absolutely not we're gonna have a conversation you know what I'm saying? So that's right. just my take on it. Okay, I, I want to go back to the D Moses. Um, hi, how are you? Uh, you said Daniel's making me proud. He's <laughs> like, he's making me proud as well. Like within the first hey, like I, ten minutes, I was like, oh, he's different. You know, listen, but, um, I'm gonna talk my truth. But listen, I, as far as the outnumbered, <laughs> um, we do. I do invite guys up here. So if you're interested, you know, come on. Like, I would be, love to. If you get him on, please can I? I just want to. I want to be on with him too. I would right. absolutely. Love yeah, but I I try to on. get as many black men up here as possible because us women we have questions, you know, and we're not like we're not the oh no you didn't we're the type mm -hmm. where we're like okay I, I, yeah so we listen we respect everybody's opinion but you know hence that I've noticed like these are things that we think about I think about everybody think about but we just having these conversations like privately but now we're bringing it publicly. But um, we ain't jumping. I don't want you because it's, it's it's four of us. We ain't jumping it, you know. But okay, so here's my here's my take, and then we can move on. Um, I really don't. Whenever I meet people, I or guys, I um, uh, I let them know from the get go. I was like, we either gonna be one of three things. We either gonna be um, business partners. We're gonna do business together. We're gonna be in a relationship, lovers, or we're gonna be friends. Ain't no, cause I'm grown. Ain't mm. no, we lovers. We, we we did business, and I'm fucking on you. Now we lovers, and then we ain't work out, and now we friends. I don't do that because I don't I don't want to have to moving on with my life. I don't want to have to deal with like what Daniel was saying, like my guy, my new guy, like wondering like, hmm, is she really over there teaching him mm. how to make funnel cakes, or is she I over can't. there, you know? I naked right. on the apron you know i ain't doing all that you know and so i overthink too much like, I just don't, i'm I don't, an overthinker i, I just can't so yeah like, I, don't, I don't bring those problems so i always give guys a choice to choose like what it is which one of the three you want from me you know and then they can choose which one they want but at the end of the day it's my decision on you know if i choose to do that with them or whatever but i i don't i prefer i think we're grown i just think like What's the point of dealing with your ex as a friend? Like, un unless y'all have children, unless, unless you have, you children, have yeah. children, that's that's mm -hmm. on time. But other than that, move the fuck on. Like, there's no reason 
y'all done had y'all time. Y'all done been together a year, two, three, four, five, six. If you won't talking and didn't have good communication doing that one, two, three, four, five, what the fuck? No, stop playing with me. Like we're not doing that. So some women may be fine with that. And it's not an insecure thing because I know the quality. <laughs> I know that. I know the qualities that um, I possess. So it's not insecurity. It's not no left, low self-esteem. It's just the fact that grow the fuck up. Like if y'all did not communicate, y'all did not take the time to say, hey, we having issues in our relationship. Let's go to individual therapy because I'm an advocate for therapy. Let's go to individual therapy. Let's go to group therapy. Count. Like if you didn't try to work on it and communicate while y'all was together, how the fuck was sudden now? Like, you with me now? She, hey, how you doing? Just want to check. He fine, and then because I'm because I'm in the background saying he all right, you know. <laughs> not I'm not saying. I'm looking like the crazy girlfriend, you know, and insecure. Like who is that? You know who I am. Google me, you know. Devil's advocate. My, my, my boyfriend is not allowed to talk to his ex. <laughs> I'm playing devil's advocate. To put those not rules in, like they should automatically know. Devil's advocate. Yeah, I was saying if I'm playing devil's advocate, not everyone breaks up because of poor communication skills. But you know, it could be something way left field of why they broke up. It's Give me not something. About, Give me something. Like, let's say maybe they couldn't. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they couldn't. Like something stupid. Like maybe they couldn't agree on where to live, or maybe how my situation might be one day where I don't want kids. They want kids. That's why we broke up. We have great communication skills, but at the end of the day, we want different things. But if y'all have great communication skills, you're going to talk about that. But that's what I'm saying. Like, maybe we've talked about it. Maybe we were trying to get through that, and it oh, that part just didn't work out. Okay, so let's go with... Well, here, here's my question. Here's my question, if I may. Oh, go ahead. At the end of the outcome. So... Like, I'm just saying, based off of what Ashley was saying when she was like, right. y'all have great communication skills. Why y'all got good communication skills now? I'm just saying. Ashley probably be like, I don't give a fuck. No way. <laughs> I, I, I'm not doing that. Because, like, first off, kids should be a topic of discussion from the get-go. So, I'm not, not saying, I like, as soon as you meet a person. Think about stuff, though. Huh? Like, if you, it's something that y'all are continuing to about. Here. It's <laughs> not necessarily, like, Maybe that person was not like, I want kids or I don't want kids. Maybe they're just like, I'm still on the fence about it, you know, but I want to see where this relationship goes. And maybe it's something that was going back and forth and, you know. See, see, that's, see, that's the thing. There's People, just different, like, I'm just saying like, and that's just an example. It's not yeah. always about like, we broke up because we couldn't communicate type of thing. That was just an example. We're not talking about specifically that specific issue. That's just what came off the top of my head first, but I'm just saying, like, it's not always like we have bad communication. That's why we broke up. Right. 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 I have a question. Broke up. Move on. Right. I was about to say, and my thing is like, my, I know we got to move on, but my question is, what are you holding on to that you need to remain a friendship with them? That's my question. Like, for well, me, not, whoever, whoever, whoever breaks up with me, whoever like, or, or if I get out of a relationship and they hit me with the, hey, I, I have no problem being friends. Let's be friends. The main thing I hit them with is I don't need no more friends. Mm. I really don't. I'm, well, I'm 27 years old. With new people. I was with you for a reason. You know what well, I'm saying? That's, like, that's what I'm talking about. It's a matter of the level of communication that's going on. Like when we're talking about friends, like are we talking about like, we're like in communication like on an often basis because that I'm not okay with but if it's just like maybe like oh I your uncle you know I know has like you know a good tire place let me call him up and see if I can get some tires from his place you know like once in a while <laughs> or if y'all see each other in public can y'all be cool type of thing that's why I was saying like there's there's a level to the community communication type of thing like if y'all are on a daily like communication basis where you like need right. to talk to them I'm not but okay I still I still but feel if like y'all are cool like we're like you know I'm cool with somebody being cordial I think that's the word that would be for me at like, Walmart like you said if I see you at Walmart God bless you good to see you but I'm not holding a conversation there your mama with you. say hey right. you have a conversation? how the family, how the family? <laughs> The family doing well? That's fine. That's All it. right, now you have a good one. Be that's best. conversation, I'm not, though. That's just small that's talk. But what I'm saying, because when I you speak, get what I'm, but I'm not going to sit here. I get what you're saying. I'm, I'm not going to speak now. 
I'm being picky, but I'm just saying that's still a conversation. It's small talk, but it's splitting hairs. You're splitting hairs. You're splitting hairs. (laughs) You know what you're doing. You're splitting hairs here. Okay. (laughs) What I'm saying, what I'm saying is, I don't like I tell I don't need any more friends. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't especially for if I'm I'm 27, okay? Like I'm I'm I, I am in the dating scene to find my wife. So if you're if you're if you're you back here, if you're back here, if you're back oh here, right? God. You're over here because we don't went through this timeline and I didn't pass by you and it didn't work out. Not saying that I won't spin the block if I'm single. <laughs> Hold on now. But what I'm saying is what I'm saying is if I if I move on from you and there's somebody else, I have no reason to talk to you. No, more. I have no reason to communicate with you. No I have more. no reason, I have a reason to be cordial because I'm a gentleman. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to sit here and 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 have you on speed dial like they did in the old days or I anything like that. Not. You know what I'm saying? saying? But but that's what men that's what men and women do. And they make the excuse as we were just better off as friends. Oh, when that's behind no closed door, behind closed doors, y'all still hungry. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? So like I don't for me is I'm trying to keep it pushing. And if you're not, if you're not on the same train as Daniel, the next stop, I'll help you off the train. Mm-hmm. But I don't need to say nothing to you after that. You get what I'm saying? Like, if, if, am I making sense? I'm saying. Like, Yo, that's why I said I don't, I don't feel the need. That's why I asked, what is, what are you holding on to? I feel like somebody else that has a friend that 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 they were either intimate with or romantically intimate with, you're holding on to something. That's just me. What are you holding on to? What is the traits that I don't have, that I don't possess, that you still want from him? You get what I'm saying? Like, you can't have you over it. Yeah, yeah, and and over I need it. you to be over that. I need you, unless you have kids, like I said. Listen, that's why Daniel- I have no I, problem be- Woo! Listen, woo, I, woo. I agree with you. One day, a man like you put me on my toe. Listen, I, one of the, one, one of the questions that I ask guys, like when I'm conversing with them and stuff, with the purpose of, I don't know about marriage because that's a little too much paperwork for me, but um, <laughs> uh, with talking to them, I always ask them about their ex. And then a lot of people say, why do you, that's in the past. Let the past be, no, I need mm, to know. I need to know. Yeah, that's why I said, see. I need to cousins. know. I, I, I guess I'm saying, like, I need, and I always ask guys as well. I said, what's, what's a flaw or two that she said that you need to work on? And then what's something that you know that you need to work on? Like people, mm. women, we need to ask, y'all need to ask these questions, mm-hmm. you know? But my um, thing is, I need to know about that past because I don't care what anybody says. Every woman and every man, we're so mentally messed up in this generation that basically almost everybody, anybody runs into is damaged in some sort of way. We and all I got need baggage. To know, I need to know where that damage is. You can, okay. I know, I, don't even look at me. Daniel, I'm gonna correct you. I want to correct you because I don't want nobody tearing you up. I want everybody to respect him. So we're going to use, we're going to take away the D word and we're going to replace with the oh, B word. Oh, damage, damage, damage. Yeah, like damage. Yeah, because some people might take offense. Okay. Oh, well, I know women going to take offense to that. So we're going to say baggage. Everybody come with a baggage. Bag. Everybody baggage. got a book. We're going to either use B for oh, baggage oh, 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 or baggage. B for book because everybody I got apologize. a story. They come right. with a story or you come with a, a bag, an overnight bag, to go bag, take out bag. Everybody come with something. So, but don't think, don't think I was just talking about women, though. Please. Men too. Men too. I'm about to say, please, please don't I was, think I was just talking about women because I was talking about both sexes. Like yeah, I was but not we, just women, funny. Like y'all women are that. damaged. I was so saying. damage is a bad word because I swear I call men damaged goods. I call men. That's damaged. what I. That's what I. I use that too. And I damaged didn't. That's why I said I didn't know. I, I didn't know it was a a disrespectful thing. And I, I really, I apologize. I didn't know it's it was not a disrespectful, a disrespectful thing. thing. It's just like when listening to you talk. Like I, I wish I could high five Ashley right now because in my mind, when listening to you talk, my first thought was like, I'm not damaged. I know. <laughs> and, and and I felt that like for everybody because yeah, everybody's yeah, gonna yeah. say that. That's okay. why I was like, I get, I get that. Want to damage, like, don't get me wrong. I know a lot of people have gone through some stuff and stuff like that, but I would never consider myself as damaged. I consider that I may have some baggage, like Ashley said, because you know yeah. everybody has their own stuff that they yeah, every, yeah. I know I have baggage, but I wouldn't call me damaged. I wouldn't say that at all. Okay, well, I definitely understand. I, I definitely understand that. But I didn't take it as offensive, though. I was no, just, I know, I know. For some, yeah. for anybody, if they did, I'm just saying. I wasn't saying that in that type of man. I'm just right. saying 
everybody has the baggage is basically what I was saying. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, I, and I think I think no women, 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 we can accept that a little bit more. We're we're more open to say, you know what? I did I was raised in a single parent home. We didn't have this, but men on the other hand, they'd you be like, Yeah, they can't take because mm-hmm. it's a pride thing, it's an ego mm-hmm. thing. They'd be like, No, nah, I'm I'm good, bro. I'm a honey. Man, I'm let me let me tell down. you, it took me a long time for somebody to be able to tell me about myself and either use that word or say, hey. You know what I'm saying? You got some issues you need to work out because I always thought I was, you know what I'm saying? Just a, yeah. a great dude. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like no matter what, but I, you know, I still have things that I need to work on. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I don't know yeah, what I'll it do. is. Like I couldn't accept that. I couldn't accept somebody seeing my flaws. I already see my flaws. I don't need you to tell me, you know what I'm saying? But, but like, I get that. I totally do. I totally get that. All right. So I think majority, the so. Uh, the question basically was, um, how do you feel about your new person um, maintaining a friendship with their ex? Um, we're 50-50 on it. Like, uh, some of us are saying, no, it's, y'all done had your opportunity, move on. And then the other half is more like, um, as long as it's cordial, respectful, then I don't care, you know. All right, so we're going to move on to the third question, uh, which is, um, this question was submitted by Miss Shug Knight. She should be in the comment section Miss Jenna yeah. Marie Johnson um she said what form of love was taught to you as a child that shaped you as an adult that, that what what form of love was taught to you as a child that has shaped you as an adult and I'm gonna go first I I'm gonna use a vocabulary word I'm gonna say accountability so like my mom you know she's like uh you know you just gotta be responsible or whatever whatever you do, it comes back on you. So I use that now accountability as an adult now, you know, um, that's my form of love that has shaped me as an adult to make me a responsible adult now, you know, accountability. Like if I, if I fuck up or if I do something wrong, I don't have no problem with like brushing it off um, on somebody else or something else and be like, well, it wasn't my fault. It was, well, if they would have just, no, no, I'm an adult. I can, I'll stand in whatever it is and I'll take accountability. If I fucked up, okay, I apologize. How can we fix this? If something is broke, how can we fix this? Fix this? How can I make it right? So uh, my love, what was shown for me as love as a child would be accountability for me. I'll go, go ahead and go. Okay. Um, I know growing up, I've all, well, not growing up, but I've, I'm, I would say I'm brought up on love and survival. Mm -hmm. Some people are brought up on either or, which shapes them to either be a loving person or a person that doesn't know how to receive love. Um, The reason why I say both is because my mother always made sure that me and my brother were perfectly fine being ourselves, being in tune with our own feelings not being one of those kids, one of those guys that was men don't cry kind of thing. Big boys don't cry kind of thing. Like she always nurtured us to the point where we knew what it was like to feel love and give love. Now, on the other hand, I've had to grow up on survival for the simple fact of my father. My father was this ideal man. My father was this pastor. Um, Him and my mother were co-pastors of a church. Um, Now I'm getting vulnerable now. But he, you know, they were married 18 years. Next thing I know, he's walking out. Next thing I know, he, he, we're, things coming out of the water. We find out he's been committing infidelity, things of that nature. I'm not, I won't go into it. But being that when he walked out, I didn't know how to be a man. And then, you know what I'm saying? You know the phrase, your mother can't really teach you how to be a man. She tried her best. She tried her best. But I've had to survive and learn things that it, the hard way, basically. I had to learn things in ways that if my father was there, he probably could have kept me from there. He probably could have kept my brother from there if he was there. What what at what age did um he became Casper? At what age? I you? so let's see, it was 2005. It was the year before I moved to South Carolina. I want to say I was a 12, turning 13. Okay. Okay. Um, so he was there half my life, right? but even still, he was there when 
I don't really need, I'm learning, but like, I'm still a kid. So like the, the hard stuff is, you know, when you're getting older as a, as a man, is that making sense what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, it does. So when I really needed him, I, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm getting some hair on my chest. I'm getting some hair on my face. I'm, I'm making more decisions. I, I didn't have him. So the decisions that I'm making, it was literally trial and error. You know what I'm saying? So it was, that's why I say it was love and survival. And it shaped me to be a man that wants to not afraid to talk about his feelings and, and to be soft, you know what I'm saying? But also like to know when to be soft. That makes sense. Right. It does. So, it does. Mm. I got a question for you, Daniel. Yes, ma'am. So with him doing that, did that affect your ability on how to, on how to learn, uh, or how to love a woman? Or how to treat a woman? Did that affect affect you in any kind of? Way? I like the problem. I, this is not me boasting at all. Um, I, I love quotes. So if you hear a bunch of quotes, I'm sorry. There's a quote that says, uh, "A smart man learns from his own mistakes. A wise man learns from other people's mistakes." So in the past couple, in the in the last few years of my uh, of my parents' wedding wedding marriage, as it was going downhill, whatever, I didn't notice it. I still remember how not to treat a woman. So if anything, he taught me how not to treat a woman. You know what I'm saying? He taught it, let the let the uh the the movies and the and the the TV shows where the hopeless romantics are falling in love, let them teach me how to be romantic. He taught me what not to do. Okay. So it it affected me, yes. But I feel like it didn't affect how I treat a woman. Cause to this day, I'm still a gentleman. He just taught me what not to do. So then, actually, you know your saying? mom did teach you then, because I'm sure you, where he picked, where he dropped the ball at 12, your mom continued, you know, running with it. Definitely, so, definitely. Yeah. The only reason, the only reason why uh, I was talking about like the actual things that a man right. can teach, you know what I'm saying? But as far as that side of things, she taught me that. She right. taught me what you know to expect of standards of a strong woman of a good woman. She told me what to, you know, she taught me things that about these females that, you know what I'm saying? If she didn't, I probably would have been somewhere in the creek. Somewhere. You get what I'm saying? Like she's taught me so much about how to love, but he's taught me what not to do. Okay. That's and good. So I just, out. yeah. And I had to, you know what I'm saying? I had to only because like, if I just sat there, like most people do that have daddy issues and then they're just mentally messed up. Because all they're thinking about is what happened. You get what I'm saying? Not everybody. Again, the same thing with the damage thing. I'm not talking about everybody. I'm just saying right, in, right, some, right. in some circumstances, <laughs> you know, it's just, you have to, it, I, I'm a glass half full kind of person. I've always been that type. So like, yeah. All right. Um, I can go. Okay. For me, um, love for my household was, I'm going to piggyback off um, Daniel, definitely survival and loyalty. Ooh. My mother, she was, um, she's a mother of four women, four girls. She was a mother, she's a mother of four women. So um, for survival, we lost, I lost my father at, at an early age. So she had to do it on her own. I see her do it on her own, like work all these jobs, several jobs making sure that we had clothes on our back, food on the table, and like, you know, just surviving, you know what I'm saying? And like, honestly, to this day, like I've learned because I have to survive. And every time I get to a survival mode, I think about my mother, like, okay, she showed me how to do that. I know I can make it. And when I go home to her, I'm like, you know what, Ma? Guess what I did? But guess what I had to do? I survived. And she was like, that's what I'm talking about because it's survival, loyalty. You know, with siblings, you have fights in the house, so you don't feel like you're loyal to these women in the house. But when we in the streets, oh, yeah. nobody gonna tell us nothing. Nobody oh, gonna yeah. tell us nothing. You're not putting your hands on my sister. You're not talking crazy to my sister. If you talk to me crazy, you talk to her crazy, it's a, it's four of us. You not, it's not easy. It's not easy for you. And I can honestly, we probably had just fought maybe hours ago. But if we go out in the streets, you're not touching my sister. You're not saying nothing about her. Not, no, no. And to this day, because no siblings, we get into it. 
you not saying nothing too much about my sister. Because that's how we brought up. You're not saying much about my mother. You're not saying much about my nieces and nephews. And I don't care how much I get on. And I, I, I'm, I'm a family bashing on Facebook. I don't give a how much, how many times I go out there and I talk bad about my family. You're not going to do it. I'm loyal. You know so, what? Yeah. Um, Courtney taught me that a little bit. And Courtney, <laughs> you don't know this, so I'm a, some transparency here. Remember oh, when no. I, remember when, um, <laughs> remember, uh, cause I'm damn near basically an only child for you. Um, remember when I was downtown, uh, Marion and fast forward, we're not gonna go too deep into it, but basically, um, you taught me that you was like, you know, you and your sister and stuff. And you was like, I don't, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I don't, I don't care. You're not going to talk to my sister. Like, it was a situation that happened. And I was like, but what if they're wrong? I was like, what, what, but what if your sister was wrong? What if your, you know, was wrong? And you was like, oh, I don't care. You was like, no, while we're here, it's, you know, and then I was like, but you was like, but behind closed doors, like when we get back in the car. Yeah. And I yeah. always remember that. I was like, that is because I'm the type of person where I'm like, I like to stand in my truth. And so I was in the mind frame thinking like, oh no, if my sister's wrong, now you know you're wrong. You shouldn't do that. But I was like, it's a time, I guess the time and place for those types of things, you yeah. know, because that would like I'm divide, check, you know. I'm so. gonna check why you put me in that position, but but my thing right, is that right. that now, I'm not gonna let nobody see where we flaw that. I'm not gonna see nobody where we're weak at because when we're fighting, we're weak. I'm not yeah. gonna let you see that. But you, at this moment, oh, you finna get it. You finna get it. Everybody who know me and my sisters from back in the day, you know, we don't play about each other. We don't do that. We don't do that about each other. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Great. So, survival and loyalty. So, Keisha, mm-hmm. what about you? Um, well, I've had a little bit of everything, um, but the biggest thing has been love. Um, and something Daniel said when he was like, uh, I can't get the exact words, but to paraphrase it, I've always been told you can either learn from someone else's mistakes or you can either learn from someone else or you learn for yourself. Um, so I grew up a lot learning from other people's things. Um, so I appreciate stuff from other people. Mm. Uh, I appreciate the fact, now my, my granddad was a farmer. So there was the cotton field, there was the back of field, there was the garden. And mm-hmm. see, he died when I was about six years old. So I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't, you know, I didn't get that chance to experience that type of farming life. But the simple fact to hear what my mom and them say, what they had to go through, what they had to do, where they had to be, how it was. If you were sick, you better be sick. And if you wasn't, you better stay sick because you was going to be in the field. Uh, like all that <laughs> stuff. I grew up appreciating the fact that I never had to go through that. So my biggest, th- but so with that though, like love is what they taught me. Like, it doesn't matter what, how, when, where, the arguments, the fights throughout people. I got some family members now on my buses, but. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, Shell. You hear that, Whitney? Not Shell. Buses, buses. Listen, Jesus got to break the point sometimes, okay? <laughs> The whole thing of it is, play some crime mob. Nothing you but. <laughs> but I, st- but I still like I have the love. Like um, I don't know if you remember Ashley. Anything when we was in school, like I used to feed people. As much as people picked on me, as much as people bullied me. If you were hungry, I fed you. Like that's what I was raised with. I- well, I- she fed me too. I- I when she was a teacher right in here. school, she used to give me some snacks. I. <laughs> Listen, I can say I remember right I here. got an ISS and she said, You hungry? I said, yeah. <laughs> listen, I listen, I love peace. I love like she is one of the I always tell people this, like, because people, this is some behind the scenes stuff, but people be like, you know her, you know, because I guess like we kind of opposite, you know. I'm more the no, no, you're not, and she's more the come on down, you know. But <laughs> she I love her because she's like always been the same. She's like the one of the her and Melvin, Melvin Brown, they're like the two most nicest people I know. Yes. And I'm a, I'm a handful sometimes, you know, uh, you know, not no more, you know. Sometimes. I, I mean, I ain't got no record. Like, I ain't, you know, I ain't got no, I ain't on no ankle monitor like some it's people, but you know, it's I'm just cold. more of a, I'm the no nonsense friend. Like, I'm not going to let you run over certain people that I know. I'm not going to do that, you know. And then I'm the person, I got bail money, you know, I'm probably not going to do that, but you know. 
<laughs> but anyway, so like I will say this, like she's one of the most nicest people I know. So when she said the love thing, like that is so totally her. Like she's not putting on for the she camera right love. now. She is like the most nicest person I know. Even she when she love. need to be Tell mean, me. she's just like, well, I'm just like, <laughs> hell, fuck that shit. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, and she's just like so nice. Like I don't, I'm God still working on me because I ain't got that yet. You know, my God. Well, I tr- I mean I try to be, but that's that's <laughs> what that's what they gave me though, like the love and all that stuff. And you know, Mama taught me to survive. A lot of people probably wouldn't think so, but she has taught me to survive. Um, she's the one that's kept me out of a lot of financial debt. Like a lot of people in financial debt right now, because it's like, ooh, I could do this. Ooh, I could get credit card and right. I could do that. Ooh, I could do the loan and I could do- and now and I'm. But she always told me. She's like, you start getting these things, they start adding up, they start That's taking right. away from you, they start doing this, they start doing that. So I have absolutely one credit card, only one, <laughs> and that is definitely for ER emergency. purposes. <laughs> ER, not, not emergency, ER purposes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> emergency room? <laughs> <laughs> ER purposes. So, I mean, so, you know, so they taught me the the love. They taught me the the survival, the stability, the, I mean, it's just a whole bunch that kind of, I, I came up with, despite the fact of my dad. My dad wasn't around with me. Uh, she left when I was, kind of basically when I was a baby. My mom left, her, and I'm glad she did. But at the same time, it did affect me because right, right. a lot of the guys that I had talked to or ran into, they would begin to treat me like my dad did, which was not good, which was horrible. So Generational I curse. You said what happened? Yeah, generational curse. Right. And it was beginning to affect me and my sister stuff until I spotted it one day. And I was like, no, we got to break this. We got to stop mm-hmm. that. And so he, it, it did. And I would, it, I mean, I would see it in a lot of the way the guys would treat me. So it is true. It is true a lot of times, not all the time, but it is true a lot of times where a female will date her dad. It's, it's, it's true in a, in a lot of ways. They had some qualities of them because if my daddy didn't do nothing else, my daddy loved working. Drove the bus, drove the bus by day, at Sarah Lee by night, probably was hoeing over there and stuff like that. But <laughs> at the same time, at the same time, he would work. You couldn't get him to do nothing else. He would work and he would sing. Singing was his passion. And so, you know, it, it does have an it that has an effect as well. Cause it it it's like it's almost like it shows you, but you try to take it opposite, like Daniel. He took his opposite. Some people don't know how to do that. Some people hold on to that and figure this is the way to be. But he had the mom that was there that basically said, you treat a woman how you want your mama to be treated. Like that, I feel like that's one of the best ways a, a mama can raise her son if she happened to do it by herself is treat a woman the way you want your mama to be treated. If you don't want no man hitting me, you better not hit one. If you don't want no man disrespecting me, you better not disrespect one. Like, how you want your mom, your daughter, sister, niece, like all you know, all that is in there. So, so I have to say all of what you guys said, the loyalty and all that stuff. Cause after I finish kicking their tail, I'm still gonna love them, hug them. Hey, how you doing? That that's like, true. I I agree with you, Keisha, especially about um a mom, you know, raising a son or whatever. But cause I. <laughs> Quick story. Uh, I never get on um, because my I grew, grew up in a single parent home as well. Um, my mom she did get married, so she she did attempt to try to raise us up in a, a two parent household with a male figure there, but he won't shit. But anyway, um, but uh, I never get one time. Me and my brother, my um, got an argument, and my brother, uh, I'm telling you this because of women. What Keisha said about a woman raising a boy, about teaching them how to treat a woman but me and my brother had got an argument one time and i never forget he told me um some juicy j type shit the, uh three six mafia he was it, is it yeah three six mafia. he told me to um slob on his knobs <laughs> my mama told his oh, ass up yeah, yeah. she told his ass oh she said slob on what <laughs> on what <laughs> that little knob you got down there first she belittled his ass she made she let him know ain't no corn ain't no ear down there it was the mini corns you know and she told his ass up 
I, I, I don't know if you remember that, but I will always remember that, you know. But anyway, so uh, Miss Shugnot or uh, Jenna Marie, that was a great question. Keep them coming because that 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 made us get like intimate, like more, you know. So now let's bring it back up. We was kind of softened. All right, so going to the fourth <laughs> question. Wait, Courtney. It's good. It's okay. I couldn't even get my words together. I was thinking like what everybody was saying. So it's okay. Let's move on. No, no, no. We didn't okay. get to meet. <laughs> oh, we... oh, no, we got to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's so many people over here. <laughs> Look. <I'm> so... <laughs> okay, yeah, let's get you. What you, what you learn? Yeah, because you're, you know, you're, you're interesting. So, you know. Oh, I mean, I couldn't get my words together anyway. So if we want to move on, we can. What do you mean? Like, okay, so, okay. What kind of love did I grow up on? I mean, I grew up on love. I want to say I want to. That has that, shaped you as an adult. Like something that was happening then. And like now you're taking it as an adult now where you'd be like, oh, I look back on like that well, made me. similar to what Esther was saying, loyalty. I think because I was I grew up in a single parent home, but my dad was actively in my life throughout my whole life, um, still is. Um, and I've been fortunate enough because, you know, normally when you have parents who are at least separated, you only get to know kind of one side of the family. Right, right. I've been lucky enough to know both sides of the family. And luckily, both of my both sides of my family are very family oriented. They're very loyal to family. They're very, you know, trusting a family for the most part. So, I mean, loyalty is something that, that is, has, you know, shaped me. I think I'm a very loyal person. Um, and my best friend can attest to this too, but <laughs> I think that's one of the main things. I mean, I had other things, but I can't put my words together how I want to, but loyalty, I think, especially my mom, she's really big on family. Like she'll, she'll be like, you know, as, as much as I want to like call certain people out and also they be like their family talk about behind closed doors oh, okay. <laughs> oh so because i thought she was gonna say she's gonna say no let's not talk about it at all so she's saying no talk about it but just over here no mom no my mom is all about talking about your truth and being honest and everything else like that she's not gonna tell me to just not you know feel what i'm feeling but she's she's just you know that's for the public don't let the public know what's going on with family we're gonna keep it in you know well, you do, you take that now because you know you say you don't post stuff so you yeah but, i mean that's just we, me with my personal life you know how i feel about that i just don't want everyone to know every every move that i make every person that i might be talking to or who i'm not talking to i'm just i'm just private in general because like i said we'll go back to what i said once you put it on the internet you give people uh uh right a on the internet you give people a chance to have an opinion about it and mm. me especially with how sensitive i am I don't need your opinion. I really don't. <laughs> so, and it, it, it's, it's like, you know, it could be just so innocent, but once you put it out there for people to have to put an opinion on it and judge it, you have no one to blame but yourself regardless of whether you like that opinion or not because you put it out there for it to that happen. For, to that, to, yeah. All right. So let's go to the fourth question. And I think we're going to wrap it up with this question right here. Um, the fourth question is, relationships this generation uh this was a daniel um brought this up uh which is he was basically saying relationships now during these times compared to back in the day uh we are more quick to give up and i was telling him i was like i think it's because we're just not like with the bullshit anymore we're just like you know what i got options i don't have to do this da, da, da. You know, so Daniel, can you go more in depth about it? Like explain it a little bit more. Um, basically what me and Ashley was talking about was more so is I I think in our generation, like she said, we're quick to give up because we have a form of pride that we basically pulled out of our butts. You know what I'm saying? Like we our pride is so thick that we can't A, admit when we're wrong, uh, B, accept that you may not have won that argument at that time. You know what I'm saying? That person was making better points than you. Things that, there's anything like that. And it's just, we're so, oh, I don't got to deal with this. I don't have to deal with this at all. So you know what? F you 
and your family. I'm going to go over here. Ooh, and we I have this. Somebody. I, oh, I, I, I talked about my mom in a minute. Oof. We have this whole, like, we have this thought that the, our relationships are supposed to be perfect. That's where a lot of the thought is with a lot of people. Not, not everybody. But they, they say, or it's perfect for what you feel like you can, that you'll take. You're di- like the deal breakers are so thick that like, okay, yeah, we'll work through anything except this. And that could, that could be something that could be worked through. You get what I'm saying? So I just feel like back in the day, I feel like it was different because a lot of times they had to stay. They had to work it out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, they, they had them 12, 13 kids that they had right. to keep. Or, or just the situation of, you know, women weren't necessarily, they were housewives back then. They wasn't As working, independent. empowered, independent, strong women like today. No offense to the people in that generation, but that's just how it was. Daddy brought home the bacon, mommy cooked it. You know what I'm saying? So like now that women are so much stronger, so much outspoken, a lot of times it was like, well, there's just certain things I won't take, boo-boo. And that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? And which is, that's totally fine. That's totally right. fine. But I guess for me, it's, it's, it's as though it's like, this is something that could be really minuscule. This is something that can be sorted out with simple conversation. A simple conversation on that, communication, but we don't do that. We're, we're just ready to close the door. Making sense what I'm saying? It does. Let me ask you a question. Um, is cheating a deal breaker for you? Absolutely. That, that is something that I have. Really? I, okay, yeah. Absolutely. I, I take pride. I take pride in being able to say with confidence that I have never committed any form of infidelity in any relationship I've ever been in. I've never cheated a day in my life. And I hold who I am talking to, to that same standard. And by hold, when, when I say that, I hold them to the standard of we're conversing, we're talking. Now the conversation's coming up where we're going to be exclusive. Now the conversation's coming up where we're going to get into that, uh, that um, relationship. All right, well, let's talk about it. If you cheat on me, it, it, it ain't no coming back. That's just what it is. Because I'm not going to cheat on you. If I see, like I told y'all earlier, I'm not just searching for a girlfriend. And I'm not searching for a girl that's content with only being a girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? So if you're, if you're going to have, like, be unfaithful, you can do that over there. You know what I'm saying? Because if you, I feel like, and well, no, I'm not going to say that. But yes, that's, a, that's an absolute deal break. Because I would never cheat. I'm going to leave first. Like, I'm okay. out of here. Okay, so, okay. So, if she cheated, of course you're upset, you're angry, you would have never done this to her. Is it possible to, because there's all types of steps in marriages and stuff, is it possible to just legally separate, but in the process of legally separating, meaning there's paperwork involved, you know, not mm-hmm. no Black people separate, you know. Right. <laughs> um, where you over here with your new girlfriend, she over here with her man, but y'all still legal, but y'all legally separated. Um, can y'all would you be open to counseling so you can figure out her her mindset of why she stepped out on this relationship, even though you were like this great guy, not a perfect guy, because ain't nobody perfect, but you're this great guy. Mm-hmm. Like, what was it that she was going through? Like, isn't there a part of you that is curious to know, like, well, I'm doing everything, you know, like we got this beautiful relationship this beautiful family and she stepped out on me so would you be i'm always to that i'm always gonna want closure i'm always gonna want closure that's not a problem closure is needed because that's what that's what helps heal the trust issues you know what i'm saying so yeah i'm gonna talk to her it ain't i'm not gonna be like you know what just just you know get 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 out like i don't want no we're gonna talk Why'd you do what you did? Why you felt like you had to do what you did? This is not no resolution though. This is not, okay, we're going to work this out because I told you not when we got married, not when, you know, I told you when we got together. You know what them teachers that have, I have one warning at the beginning of every school semester. This is my, you do this, you out of here. And it, there, there is no chance. That's just how it is with me. You know what I'm saying? I give I I'm willing to work through anything else but that. I'm willing to work through. I'm willing to work through. Well, I mean, I say that 
broadly. There's a lot of bad things. She killed somebody. I don't know. I'm about to be, but I'm just saying, like, I can we can talk about working through anything except infidelity. Because just like you said, no matter, no matter if we have the closure and we work it out, there's still gonna be something in the back of my head that's like, okay, what else am I gonna do wrong to make her step out? She done did it once. Okay, well, you you brought up a great point because if because you know I don't I don't believe in people trying it again or getting back together if you know you can't trust that person if you always your mind is always wondering like is she really going to work is she really doing overtime is she really texting her sister so if you know you can't mentally like let it right. go then right. yeah let it go because that's how that's like that's honestly and truly I've actually had a conversation with Courtney about this a long time ago like last year or something like that and. I told her like I I'm me personally getting vulnerable again. I'm a I'm a bit of an overthinker. Um, that's something that's something that I work on, and it's not just in relationships. So I don't think it necessarily stems from heartbreak, but it plays a part. You Are know you what I'm saying? Scorpio? I am. I was born November fourteenth. Yeah, that's not new. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but but it's it's just a simple fact that I I overthink about a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? I have a job interview. You guys, my mom, I'll be having job interviews. And I'm like, man, I just don't know. I said this thing. I feel like I sounded stupid. Like, <laughs> you probably like don't think my credentials are enough. So now that stems from me having baggage that I'm working on. You know what I'm saying? But now I'm still overthinking even more after she done stepped out on me. After you, so I've done something wrong. You told me that there's something that I've done to made you step out, right? So that means every time I do something, you're gonna step out. I can't live like that. I can't, yeah. I'll, I'll lose sleep. You know what I'm saying? So now if I make you mad, you gonna call your ex? Now, if I make you mad, you gonna call Tommy down the street because I, I, I left the seat up and you dunked your donut? Like, and you know, it's you bad. know it's okay. women would be like, now you being petty, now, now you just but, being petty. But it's the truth though. I, like, it am is. I, am am, am I making sense? I'm a Scorpio, I get it, I, like, get it. I and I just don't have the time to not be secure in my relationship. And after you break that trust, I just don't think, and I'm not going to say never, but I just don't think that I can be secure in that relationship anymore. I just don't think that I can feel secure in that relationship. And it has nothing to do with insecurity. I know that's the, the, the opposite, right. but it's just a simple fact of I can be doing everything for you everything for you i could be i could be taking care of the bills i could be rubbing your feet at night i could be cooking you dinner i could be doing all that you still step out on me because of one thing you're gonna do it again yeah. and if, you know what i'm saying so i'm just like i just i can't that's perfect well uh what current smith said she said just constantly wondering if you're enough you know what i'm saying like if i'm doing enough you know, a lot of people worry about doing too much. I always, always worry about doing enough. Right. Because if I, if there's something I'm not doing to keep your attention, and if that's the case, you might as well just break up with me, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I would respect you so much more. I would respect you so much more if you were just like, you know, Daniel, I just can't do this. Somebody else has my attention. I, I, I'm, and I feel like I'm on the verge of cheating. Cool. Deuces. I respect you. I hope the best for you. I'm gonna be upset. I might, I might be mad at you. I might, you know, slander you. But it's a simple fact that if you, if I'd rather you leave me than cheat on me. Daniel, I, you know I, 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 I totally agree. But the way you was like, she come to you and say, I don't think I can do this. You say, who deuces? No, we're I'm not gonna be like no, no, that. No, obviously, I'm gonna act like now. a human. I get we're Scorpio, <laughs> yeah. so I don't want us to be like, you see Daniel wife, and then we be like on her Facebook status. Going to Hawaii, don't be done chopped up and put it in the backyard now. Like, don't, <laughs> don't be like so, no, like, you know, nah, nah. but I get what You'll you get think. It. I you get know, it. like you said, you're a Scorpio, you know the anger thing. And I, yeah, I've, worked yeah. on, I've worked on that a long time. I've worked on that a long time. Um, but at the same time, rejection, failure in relationships, hurt, that's a familiar feeling. You know what I'm saying? So it's not, it's not something that I can necessarily re like I will react off of in a negative manner because I done had my times where I done punched the wall. I done had my times where I done got mad. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I'm I'm through that now. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a familiar feeling. I would be more surprised if the relationship worked out than if it didn't. 
You know what I'm saying? So my fear, my fear in relationships is never is never failure. My fear in relationships is the success. Oh, I could be actually talking to my wife. I could be actually talking to them. That's scary because this might be real. But in that circumstance, I, I won't react in that negative manner because it's, I, I, of course, I won't be like that. I won't be like, cool, but I'd be like, look, look, man, I, I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Right. And right. I'm rambling. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. But, I, I totally get it. <laughs> I, um, <clears throat> I agree with you completely, like on both statements. I know the original question was, um, relationships was about this um this generation the relationships in this generation and stuff like that um but with both both of your statements I agree completely uh, my answer to the question is I think it's because I mean there's different circumstances now like Ashley said earlier we have more options you know um women aren't just you know being housewives and they don't have to be like oh right. well Jim's making all the money so I mean even though he cheated on me four they times don't feel they stuck the- anymore yeah, I don't have to stay with him just for financial security. I don't have to stay with him because I can't get my own house. You know, women are working nowadays. Right. You know, I, I mean, well, I don't know. I'd be kind of iffy about that. But, you know, women are, <laughs> women are working nowadays so they can, you know, go off. I, they don't need need a man to, you know, do stuff like that as well. I think when you think about, like, what people are willing to work with and we're willing, it's, it's all circumstantial. Like, I'm with you on the cheating. Like, I'm not doing cheating. Mm-mm. especially going back to what Karen said about like always wondering if you're enough like I can have all the closure in the world I can't me personally with how sensitive I am I cannot handle wondering if I'm enough I can't I can't handle I'll have breakdown after breakdown after breakdown and then you may have changed you may have done everything you could to change but, but it's I always gonna be handle. right there it's always gonna be exactly. right there and the way that I'm a Leo so listen when my pride is hurt <laughs> it's hard I I just I can't handle that so like I just I think that's what it is it's just it's just a matter of circumstance like if maybe if you have anger problems maybe I could sit there and try to well not maybe I could sit there and work with you you know encourage you to go to therapy you know help pay for a therapist to work through your anger problems it's all circumstantial it all depends on what the situation is I think generation z might have a thing about like um not being able to just are not willing to do the work because because they're so because they have so many options as well that millennials it's too easy to walk away but generation z is like i think they don't believe in monogamy i don't think generation z believes in monogamy i don't think culture right now believes in monogamy and so they're already ready to like any little thing they're like oh i'm going to talk to somebody else now yeah but it's too easy it's just too easy to walk away you know what I'm saying? And nobody's willing to say, hey, let's fix this. But it's just too, it's way too easy to walk away for right. for, for males and females. And I think you know Sugar Knox said something earlier about like, there's no soft spoken. I can't find the comment, but she was, said something about there's no soft spoken or something like that. Compassionate. Um, like when we was talking, when, um, when uh, Sean was here, Swamp was here, she was saying about, remember he was, you know, talking about women are gangsters, like they too, too rough, you know. Right. But and I don't, she, think that's, I don't think that's necessarily true. I mean, I, I see where the comment stems from or where that, that statement stems from, but I don't think that's necessarily true. I think that's I don't just think so either. on what women will deal with nowadays. I know me, I think I would deal with a lot. There's just some stuff that I just don't have any tolerance for going back to cheating. I don't have any tolerance for that. Mm-mm. I know that some women, there are some women out here who are like, as long as you don't make me look crazy out here in the streets, as long as you don't make me look crazy out here to the public, do what you got to do. You know what I mean? That's what, that's all they care about. Me, I don't care if it's public, mm-hmm. private. No, I don't. Yeah, I, 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 don't I actually saw, I, I saw somebody say, do that. They, uh, women were talking about that. It was like, and one girl said, and this was recently, this was on my timeline. And she was like, long as that other bitch know her place and know who the main one is, and long as she don't come running up on, I was like, baby girl, like, really? Like, you, you, you settled for that? Like, he, and he, and he just working at a plant? Like, I can understand if he was a millionaire or, you know, he was like, even in. In, in, invented something. No, but I'm just saying, like, he need to have a status. Like, yeah. 
Don't yes. accept that bullshit from a nigga working at Purdue or Harbor Freight. Like, really? Like, really? Like, have some type of standards about heard. yourself. Like, ain't, you're not going to do me like that. Like, Oh, because and she knows that, you talking- that goes back to what that goes back to like what you can like um knowing that you're enough. Like you, she's okay with knowing that she's not enough. And that that is just something I can't do. Even Long if you were a millionaire, I still I don't think I can I, do, I might try to get some money off of you before I dip, but <laughs> <laughs> oh best I, believe. I, couldn't, I couldn't stay in that relationship. I just couldn't. No. The craziest thing I've ever heard was uh a man is like a dog. Oh, he might go out in the street, but he always know where home is. What? Yeah. I that don't make that. no sense. That makes no sense to me. And so you're going to let this man go catch fleas and then come lay in your Esther. bed. Your and guess, on mute, guess, guess what be happening? Guess what, guess what happened to dogs that be roaming around? They get hit by a car. I ain't said I did it, but he was just out there. He got hit by a car. Esther, so. your mic's on mute. <laughs> oh, she... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So what I was saying before my mic tried to play me. That's because these women settle a lot. A lot of women I notice they settle. They feel like they have to have a man. I have to have a man. I need yeah. a man. Oh my yeah. God. No. And so they pick any type of man that feel like they're going to lay up in their bed every other day. Yeah. So, and that's why these relationships are failing. That's why these relationships are, that's why these people are in abusive relationships. That's mm. what they are. Like it's a lot that goes on when women are just settling just because they be with someone. And I'm sorry, I had to leave Marion County because I couldn't settle. And what I noticed with a lot of women, and I'm just going, they feel like they have to have a man to validate them in Marion County. Oh, if, oh, 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 he mine. But but but, and then we get mad at the next woman <laughs> because they, their guy is entertaining and will still deal with that guy. I refuse to settle. That's why I moved because like everybody in that, in that, in that, in that county, they're dealing with each other. They're dealing with oh, each yeah. other. Oh, yeah. They're dealing with each other. Oh, yeah. So it's a circle. So it's like, it's, it, and they're settling and it's sad. It's sad. It's, it's, it's so very sad. You know what's it's, even sadder, if that's a word, it's sadder. People, it don't matter. It makes pe sense. Pe people that leave from Marion County to go to college, you're around all these thousands of people and you end up with the same motherfucker that you why did you go out to school like, why did you go to college why aren't you growing it's because it's because it's, it's, because it's what growing? they're comfortable in it's because that's, that's exactly. what they're comfortable they're familiar it's the comfortability. With it. exactly yeah. like it's, familiar it's a familiar it. feeling i know yeah. that's why like a man a man who only goes after a man a woman who only goes after one one kind of person because Alina. not to cut you off daniel but sugar knock said men ahead, settle as well may not be as much as females but guys definitely settle and i just want to point that yeah, out he, he yes. would get that thing. men like men yeah. like that's men exactly, like that's um, what you're about to say daniel but i just wanted to point that out that, that is no 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 no. that's that, that was basically my point it was perfect what you was about to say, what you said it was perfect right. men men settle men get a certain age and it don't it, it don't matter what 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 the woman got going for herself it don't matter anything as long as it's, it's, a, it's a vagina in the bed at one point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and I hate to say it like that, but yeah, I mean, that, yeah. that, that's what happens. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, there's literally men that will steer women on for years, and that woman will be right there, right there behind him. He, go, he out there having his fun and still got her on a leash because he know mm -hmm. if he can't find nothing that he considers better, he still got something for the rest of his life. Right. Or she, or he knows, and that, that don't say nowhere. right, and that don't say that that doesn't say nothing about him, but it says a whole lot about her. You get what I'm saying? I mean, it says a whole lot about him, but I'm just saying, you get what I'm saying? Like it says, I, it says more about her. I, I want to say this real quick because I want let's talk about cheating and giving up on relationships and stuff. My cousin, she, I, I feel as though she's okay with me saying this, you know, but um, she was in a long term relationship, like. 17 years and uh she found out that her guy was cheating on her like cheating so bad that i feel like he's a sex addict like i'm per i have no degree but i'm i'm diagnosing this this guy as because <laughs> it was just the, it was just a lot and i'm not gonna go too into depth she could come on if she choose to, to to talk about it and we're probably gonna end up going viral because of this motherfucker but anyway um but you know like <laughs> 
she said something. She said something. And I know y'all probably gonna be like, what? But because I'm dating, uh, conversant with the purpose right now, I, at first when she told it to me, I was like, girl, what is you talking about? But now I kind of get it a little bit and it kind of scares me. But what she said was they've been together for 17 years and he cheated like tremendously to the fact that I think he's a sex addict. Like, I don't even think he can control it. She said, I rather, she said, I rather let him come back home, wipe his dick off and then just let him be in the bed. She said, because at least I know what I'm dealing with. And I was like, what? And I didn't agree with that. I didn't agree. I'm stubborn. I did not agree with that, right? But then, like I said, I'm conversing with the purpose right now. Like, you know, dating or whatever. Do you know how many double life men that I've dealt with or, or conversed with where they are married in a relationship and I had no idea, you know? And I'm, thank God it didn't go anywhere, you know, intimately or whatnot. But I went back to her and I said, you know what? You might be right. Like, cause ain't shit out here. <laughs> it damn, damn sure ain't shit out here. So at least like she knows, like she knows like, and it's, and it's so sad. I'm, I'm telling this real life story because it's so <laughs> bad. Like after these wives, they don't feel like sleeping with their husband anyway. So they feel like the other one, the other woman is doing the job. They're doing their job. They don't, they, they just want their man home. They just and want they take care of the bills. It's sad. They, they, they're, it's, it's they're definitely there with self love, self confidence. They just definitely excel it. And these women just, they just let these men do whatever they want to do. I guess that's why I'm single because I just can't. I can't. I really this is what I'd this is what brings out on all the choices. I'm gonna. I mean, that's powerful. Die alone? Really? Yes. I would rather die alone than be with yeah. someone who cannot be faithful to me. The one that exactly. just exactly. I just can't. Okay, but is that you know, unreali- is that unrealistic though? Like can you say no, because say- when you think about it, when you think about it, even if you are married when you die, you are still dying alone. Mm-hmm. We're her yeah. toy. You can't not with the toy. Not the toy. Oh no. <laughs> Karen, Karen, I'm with you. I will die. Bury me with my toy. I'm not, I'm not getting no toy. Now I'll be a sugar mom before I get it. What kind of toy she got? I need to know. Uh, I need I need some warmth. I need some some I do like warmth. I need toy, some snicker bar warmth action. Is, is, is so tired. Don't, so don't tired. knock it till you try it. A toy will keep you it'll it'll do the job. No, it what does. I'm saying is I'm not saying I would do a toy, but I'm just saying like I need a I would still have a man as well. Like it just wouldn't probably be my man. Like listen, listen, listen. It's <laughs> not the same. It's not the same. But it'll get the job done. That's all I'm gonna say. But just back to what I was saying. I I I just rather die alone. The person I'm with can't die with me at the same time anyway. It's not Titanic. It's not the Notebook. Like we can't sit there and be like, you know, and do our time. So I'm gonna die alone anyway. I can't take them with me. I'd rather die alone than be with. Someone who cannot be faithful to me. Who I am not enough. Who think that's that what I'm saying. saying. And I know, I know, there's people out there that think like me. Like I know that there's people out there that think like me, and I know that God's gonna put us in the same room one day. Uh, uh. And I will always, I always, and even if it doesn't happen, I always say to everybody, I am perfectly fine and content with knowing that I might grow old and just have ten dogs. I'm perfectly oh, fine. Oh no. no. You know what I'm saying? You're not know, coming over there, Daniel. I'm gonna have to leave your uh your food at, at the mailbox. I'm saying that I'm, I'm saying that as a uh, <laughs> not the mailbox. I'm saying that as a as a figure of speech when you know the old lady that can't find a man so she has eleven cats. That's what I'm saying. Like I just love dogs, but I'm I'm perfectly content. I agree with you. I'm perfectly content with dying alone. You know what I'm saying? I'm perfectly content with that because I I just can't. My heart's too big. To I mean, be that, with. And, and see, that's that's the thing that. That's the thing that I'm getting at because I'm a Scorpio. I get it. And now I'm like, okay, that's why I asked you, is your deal breaker cheating? Because let's say right now, you say you're 27. So let's say you meet somebody, be, uh, you get married within the next two years. Do you really think being married within 30, 40 years that there's not going to be no infidelity? And then, you know, we broke down cheating. There's emotional cheating, there's physical cheating, you know, like, like I just think, if I, if, I know, if I know I can do it, my deal breaker. I know I Having a it. baby on me while you're cheating is my deal breaker. So we can, because like we're human. We're separate, definitely human. So mm-hmm. uh, I ain't being nobody's stepmama. Mm-hmm. And, and honestly, oh, I ain't got no problem being a stepdaddy. I just believe my stepdaddy likes to If she got pregnant on you while oh, dealing okay. with you, 
You ain't gonna be yeah, no, no step daddy. No, I I'm out of here. I know <laughs> it's doable. That's right. why I won't have a tolerance for it. it That's what do- I'm saying. I've you done it. I'm doing it. Like I said, I've never cheated. I'm doing it now. You know what I'm saying? I've never cheated a day in my life. I'm 27. I started dating in, in you know what I'm saying, in high school. I've been dating that long, but it's doable. In the worst time where I'm supposed to be a hoe, where I'm supposed to be in my hoe phase, come on now, I'm going through my Oh, we, oh Daniel, you coming you know back because I want to talk about whole phase because I'm a late bloomer and I kind of, I low-key feel like Me too, I haven't had my I was whole phase. In high school. I ain't had I my whole phase yet. School. And I'm like, am I supposed to have a whole phase before I get married? Yes. I don't think. Oh, well, tomorrow. I don't think. <laughs> that's fine. Or you college. If you have experienced college, I definitely think that should be your whole thing. But I didn't do that. I this was just what, like a nerd. I this is just, how I feel. I, and I know we got to go. I, I don't feel like the average person has to have a whole, whole phase. I don't feel like everybody has to have a whole phase. You know what I'm saying? Because when I had mine, I felt uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. But all right. Yeah, I I, I was I was talking about um I was talking about that. I was like, are you supposed to have, like is it mandatory to have a whole phase to like do that? But I don't I I personally don't think it is. You know, I don't think you have to have that, you know. Right. I think you can go through that, which is a whole phase is just sexual experiences, you know. Yeah. I think you can you can do that with your spouse, your partner, you know, different places. You could be a whole for your spouse, but I do think you need to experience others because you never know. Like you just never know. I, I don't I don't, I don't for your spouse. Wait, I feel like the different experiences should be like well, yeah, yeah. I experience is necessary. Even jobs want you to have experience. You know, I went like, to college as I went to college as a virgin. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm still saying like you should definitely experience something. Can I say? Can I say one more thing <laughs> mm-hmm. about what you said? Actually, you said a job asks for experience. Mm-hmm. Me as a supervisor, like I've been a supervisor in a lot of jobs. When I look at resumes, I look at your longevity. I don't look at how many jobs you have. So that's the reason why I'm saying I don't feel like people have to have a whole phase because for me. You can get the experience. That's fine. But a whole a whole phase is what? A whole bunch of different experiences in a short period of time. Not really. Not really. Most, you don't have to uh, let's you. let's talk about the real definition of a whole phase here, Esther. Come on now. <laughs> like I know you, I know you want to say what you want to say, but come on now. Come on now. <laughs> like, what's the truth? You you're Jeff, you're free. You're doing what you want. You don't have to answer to no one. And if you're sleeping with whosoever you want to, then so be it. But you yeah, but I'm, I'm you talking about to. like, come on, I'm talking about like, you know, you, you sleeping with multiple, everybody. right? And you and you and you sleeping with multiple people at the same time. That's what, what I consider mean? the hope. Not the same time, but I'm talking about like the same phase in your life. Yeah. You got four different partners that you keep in rotation. You know what I'm saying? You a hope. That's your whole phase. You, that? you know what I'm saying? For a man, <laughs> for a man too. Oh. I have no. Okay, like I said, these dudes on here might not like me after this show, okay? But I have no problem calling a man up. You a hoe. That's just what it is. You so, know what I'm saying? So, so you, you think a woman that has a start on up is a hoe? Yeah. <laughs> and, okay, 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 okay. Let me explain. Let me explain. Not necessarily a starting lineup, but if you if you get if you get John on Monday and Timmy on Tuesday. And John and, and and Joe on Wednesday, or even you skip a day, Joe on Thursday, and then you got Brian on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. And if you're if you're physical with them, I don't care. Oh, about okay, 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 okay. You know what I'm saying? If you dating, you ain't supposed to. You know what I'm saying? When you're dating, you're going on dates with different people. You're learning yeah. different people. Yes. So that, I don't consider that that. But if you if you are physical with every dude that you're talking to around the same time of each other, you have a sex with multiple men and different, like on different times or the different days of the week and it's still the same week. That's a whole phase. You know what I'm saying? So I don't need, I don't, me personally, I don't need you to have all of those different experiences. So your wife can't have a whole phase? I don't judge nobody on that whole phase because I have one. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't judge nobody on that. I don't judge you on your past. I don't judge you on your past. Okay. 
I don't judge you on your past. I don't judge you at all on your past. If it's something that you did while you were younger and you working through that, now if it's something you still dabbling in, then I don't know if we can have this conversation. Right, I don't know. Right, right, but like, right, if you're right, like, hey, you know what right. I'm saying? I'm really feeling you. I want to tell you, yeah, I was a hoe in college. You know, I spent four years in a pillow case. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. <laughs> I get it. Movie. You get what I'm saying though? Like, I, yeah. I get it. I can't judge you off of that. I can't right. say, okay, now nah, I can't talk to you because you was a hoe 10 years ago. Right. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? Because you can come to me and be like, man, you the man that changed me. You're the man that that, that makes me want to settle down. Like, you're the man that I, I can see myself married. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I could be the man that God has for her. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Mm-hmm. No matter her decisions. Now, there's some other things that, you know, you take into consideration, but that's just, that's just how I feel about that. Okay. I, I'd rather, I'd rather you have less partners and you can have all the experience with that one, with that one partner, two partners, three partners that you want to have instead of having a whole phase. Okay. That's just my stance. Uh, Kiki, um, how do you, what's your um, take on uh, relationships this uh, generation? So listen, y'all said like 10 million things, but there's, there's a few things I want to put out and try to make, make it quick, right quick. Okay. So I think I'm saying it right. Is it K- Karen, Curran, Curran Smith? K- Karen? Um, she said something that said because their parents haven't put in them that they are worthy and enough with or without, without, a, with or without a man, well, without a man or woman. Okay, so I have to kind of disagree on that just a little bit. Um, the thing about the reason why I have to say I have to disagree on that is because my mom taught me, my family taught me I'm beautiful. My family taught me that I am worth a whole lot more than what people try to make me think. My family taught me that stuff. But see, for 10 years, a lot of people didn't know I suffered depression and low self-esteem at the same time. Mm. So they told me that stuff. And that, that spirit was real abiding in me for all those years. But it led me to think that it wasn't true. So mm. you can be taught that. It's just that it's, it's depending on what happens later. It depends on what's going on later. You got, you got girls that's missing fathers. So they're searching for that missing love and that man. Um, same thing for, for some guys. You got some guys that's missing the mother love and they're they're looking for that love in that woman. And then you got some guys that's missing the father and don't know how to take it opposite like Daniel said. So they look for that in that particular person that they don't need to be with. And then actually your cousin, is I understand when she said at least she know what she dealing with. Yeah. She's just too scared to get back out there and find something else. Like she comes comfortable. She's Comfortability. Comfortable. And, and we do not like being uncomfortable. We don't like new. We don't like trying to take hey, another ten. We don't like starting over. We don't over. like doing none of that stuff. Mm-hmm. So we want to stay where we already know. We want to stay with what we're familiar with. We want to know. We want to stay where we know where it's going to go. When in all actuality, you're just hurting yourself. Because like I said before, the more he go put in other women, the more spirits he bring back to her. Ooh. He's just tra- she just he just transferring, picking up and bringing it back. And that is a real so, thing. Ashley, or... I advise you don't have a whole face. Oh, I'm don't not. Have... I'm too old mm-hmm. for that. I'm too old <laughs> and too mean. I was told to. I'm a grumpy old man. Lady. It's just a little you just, bit. You already have a standard about yourself, though. You already require. You already require. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. That's just what it is. Like to get the man that you want, you have to require the qualities right. that you want. You already right. require that, so why lower yourself? Right, right. That's that's true. Don't you know lower yourself. Don't lower, don't lower yourself. yourself. You already require. But this. but I can't. But I can say, don't be a nickel looking for a dime, though. Ooh. Like so. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I learned. I learned that from my um my first husband, last gen is don't be a nickel looking for a dime. <laughs> I talking about my first husband. That, that, that thing hit my heart. And it, but it's, but it's true. But as far as the relationships, if everybody, if you could think about it for a moment, the relationships back then and the relationships now are not even different. It's just that mm. back then they was able to keep it under wraps. Back then, it's not that she felt like she had to stay or whatever the case may be. She just didn't want new. Mm-hmm. And I don't care how it go. Here go Michelle. I don't care how it go. You and your kids, as long as you do what you need to do. I, God knows he'll look out for you and your children. 
So they didn't need a man. They just wanted that man. And because they had 12 and 13 kids, they felt like they couldn't go nowhere or felt nobody else wanted them, just like women with kids now. You got men out here that can't have kids. They'll happily take a woman with, with kids. So the, I just the got my stepdaddy license last month. I'm good. Right. So like, so <laughs> the relationships haven't I just changed. renewed it. I always had it. I just renewed it. Sorry. You so crazy. Do, you, do you have a limit? Is it a, a limit on your <laughs> kids? Step kids? Like how many how many kids are you? You say, no, I can't do that many. Uh, I never quite thought about that. You should because of financial. Yeah, yeah. And if you want and, you're, I, and you and if you want to have a family as well, you do need to have a, a limit on kids. I would say, I would say like if you got three kids, I'm I'm gonna think about it. You know what I'm saying? Because I want I don't have kids. I want kids. Don't get me wrong. Right, like I said, right. I'm qualified. I've had I, I've just renewed my stepdaddy license, but I want my own kids, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I, that's something to think about. Yeah, I, I, I'm asking be that because I, I'm at that phase. Like, I think about that. Like, I want kids as well. And I'm like, I prefer just two. Like, two kids, one baby mom. Because I know I want at least, like, three. And that's five. Mm-hmm. In, like, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, yeah. And it's not wrong with that. But like I said, though, like, the re- relationships hadn't changed. The stuff hasn't changed. This is a part of a generational curse. Females thinking they got put up with it. Females thinking they got to deal with it. Females thinking they got to have all this. Oh, he he, my dad. That's my that's my child, daddy. So what? There is somebody that's out there willing to be a stepdaddy and be a better daddy than what he's ever had been, and a better man. But you can't get to that good man, and you can't get to that good stepdaddy because you too busy holding on to the no good stuff. Oh, listen, Oof. I I believe in. You yes, preaching, you know. ma'am. I believe in I believe well, in block preaching. I'm selfish. Mine can't have no uh oh. Yeah, your Wi-Fi. She look like she's deep in thought, but I know she's moving. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know if it's gonna go out or not, but I want her to because I want her to um say what she needs to say. Esther, can you hear us? Cause I don't want to close it out without her saying what she needs to say, but I do need to close it out though. Okay. Well, her screen is froze. Um, but this was great. Um, we will be norm for those of you who are new to this. Um, normally I record on Sundays, but because Sunday is Super Bowl and then the next Sunday is Valentine's, um, we're gonna be recording on Thursday. So the next the next time we'll be recording um will be Thursday, February the 11th, uh nine o'clock. We're just gonna say nine because you know Some, somebody was talking about the last question. Oh. <laughs> oh, because we're running out of time. So that's gonna be the very first question for next Thursday. The very because because <laughs> I done lost like three guests, three, three co-hosts already. Courtney, uh Esther, and then I know Kiki gotta go, you know, but that that would be d- good. That's a, that's a, this is a cliffhanger. She talking about she off tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cliff- I, I, got, I got stuff I gotta do. I'm I'm trying to sell food tomorrow, so I gotta prep. Then I gotta go to Conway because you know I got my new trucking well, business, and I, I, I got. Make my quick announcement, right quick. What? Go ahead. My announcement for next weekend. What? Next weekend, next Saturday, the thirteenth. The food. Yeah, the day. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so everyone, next Saturday, between the times of 5 and 10 p.m., well, 5 and 11 p.m. at Heaven Delight on Main Street and Mullins, there's going to be a romantic dinner for two, what is considered romantic, but if you don't have a significant other, you can, can I order a to-go plate? Yeah, you can bring yeah. a friend, you could be I'm a family. I'm going to say, because I ain't going to sit there with nobody. I ain't got oh, Lord, you can bring <laughs> a family member. But what it is, is, is a, it is a dinner for two, Oh, he should do a mixer. Oh, you know what? We need we need to get together. We should do a single mixer at at the restaurant. You're right. Well, we're gonna work on that. So yes. sat- next Saturday, it is a dinner for two for forty dollars. It's a three course meal. So you get a starter. You get your um start of a salad. You get your biscuits, and then you get to choose in between a seafood dinner or steak dinner, and then you get to choose in between red velvet cake or cheesecake. 
And then um, if you dine in, you get to choose between Stella Rose, Punch, or Water. But if you're not dining in, of course, you can't get the alcohol. I might um, need to do the forty dollars for myself. You so crazy. So and, and the CDC guidelines are being followed. So it's like five couples per the hour. So it's like five couples at five, five couples at six, five couples at seven, and so on. So you just call um, the number on the flyer, or you can inbox me. Um, hit me up somehow um, through inbox and um, you can reserve your table so you can make sure you at least have a table because it's only five tables so it's five couples by the hour and then uh, or you can order to go like we have to go you'll get the full three course meal of uh, the same so you guys that, come is, that is great so those of you who are deciding to like stay in town or um celebrate valentine's in in the home you know then that would be a great opportunity for y'all to go get that food and bring it back to the house if you you know feel more comfortable or single you know like daniel <laughs> you know go then you ain't got to worry about cooking you you can focus on look you can focus on next week because i want you on next week so go ahead i was gonna ask can i come yeah, back for I, sure look, yeah because we gotta yeah we, we gotta you were great ask, you gotta come back and then possibly Wes could come back, hopefully, because he, he wanted to come for this topic as well. But we will open up with that with that um fifth question about um are you open to the uh bringing in you know a threesome? Because men have been that question come up because men have been trying to pressure us to do that, and I ain't with all that. I ain't. I've been if, if I've been I trying to, to ponder on cat, that question since you sent it to me. Listen, if I wanted to play with some cat, I would have been a veterinarian. I don't do that. I'm a caterer, you know. But uh, so stop asking me that because I ain't doing it, you know. But anyway, um, this Stupid. is great. This is awesome. Let me, let me ask where it was. It's um, it's Main Street and Mullins. I want to say it's 147 Main Street. And, um, and go to her page. Um, go go to her page, you guys. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna share it again on my page. Uh, she gonna share it on her page. So tag me in it soon, so I can share it for you if you can, Kiki. Right. And then um, I'm also gonna be tag if you don't already, so I can share it. I'm so serious, y'all. If I want to rub on something furry, yes, I would have been a veterinarian. But um, <laughs> we're gonna um wrap this up. Um, I I have an announcement. Everything ain't going the way I wanted it to go because I want to go ahead and post it, then announce it. But I'm gonna be selling dinners this weekend. Um. Ashley's yummy tummy. Um, I'll post it. You'll see, you know, how it's gonna go. But I got a lot of stuff going on. But um, Whitney, you know, Daniel is single, Wes is single, and they are some great guys. Y'all are some awesome black men. Whitney, we need to kind of get together and probably do like a little uh mixer or something, but it's about women. We need to find eligible women that's like that would be good for them. And because they're young, and he already talking about marriage and stuff, like. 27 and y'all be 28 this year. That I'm, 35. Young. I'm 35. You're young. Listen, Daniel was one of my favorite kids. Like he was the best. He was nice then and he's nice now. He is a gentleman. And I done told him he better run that female by me before he talked to her. And I, I let him know because I I listen, that's one of my children I don't play by. No, I'm, I'm I'm doing like loaded fry boxes because I'm testing out um because I you know I'm getting my food truck built and so I'm testing out things so I'm gonna post it but as far as like seafood um it's gonna be like fries so it's gonna be like loaded fries I'm doing like pizza fries I'm doing um Philly steak and cheese fries like what what would you would think on the side it's gonna go on fries so testing it out y'all let me know how it's gonna taste but I'm gonna post it like. I'm it's gonna, gonna be in Marion too. Tomorrow? Yeah, it's in Marion. It's gonna be in Marion. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna post it like it. within. Esther, the reason why I'm not letting you in is because we got to close out. Because if you come back in, we're gonna keep talking, talking, and I got to go. <laughs> I got, I got to prep food. I got to go to Conway in the morning. I got a lot of stuff. So she announced her food stuff. I'm gonna post my food stuff. So if you're not already, <laughs> if you're not already, um following the Ashley's Jimmy Tummy catering page on Facebook, please go like it because I'm going to post it there, but I'm also going to post it on my bit, my personal page as well. And all you got to do is just text me your order. Y'all have a good night. We will open up next Thursday, February the 11th with the question about, um, are you willing to sexually satisfy your partner with a threesome? And then we're going to incorporate other questions as well. 
Whitney submitted like a lot of good Valentine's Day questions, you know, romantic stuff, you know. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll give, give you a hint on that. one for those of you watching. You, you, I know you've heard the phrase "Happy wife, happy life." We're gonna talk about that. See you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I have fun. I have fun. This is my very first podcast. I have fun. All right, I let me stop. Let me stop the um. Let me stop the recording. Uh.